men want partnership. They want to create, their, they want that best friend in their house. They want to walk inside of their house and feel like they see eyes light up. Men actually care about these things, but they don't know how to generate that. They don't know how to create that. So once he starts to understand his woman, I teach him leadership skills about how he communicates, communicating effectively. What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Rico Hundo, and we are back here at 8 at the Table, and we got some dope, dope, dope content coming for you today. Before we even jump into that, I just want to say thank you, everyone that has been supporting, liking, subscribing, you know, joining us on Patreon. We definitely appreciate it. Keep on doing what y'all are doing, and if you're new, thank you for now watching us, and don't forget to follow suit. Go ahead. Go on to Patreon. We got a lot of dope content over there as well. So... Let's go right into it, but before we, I, I gotta introduce our great guest, Cassandra. Hola, how are you guys? Go ahead, tell them where they can find you at and a little bit about yourself. Sure, my name is Cassandra. I go by Ask Miss Cassandra, and I am a relationship coach and a men's advocate. I support men to win in their relationships, so I provide them with tools, communication tools, yes. so they can get their needs met. Ahora mismo. Ahora mismo. Yeah, right away. <laughs> so any girl who is dating me currently um, and futuristically, you must seek counseling from her for two okay. weeks as a probationary period, um, just so I can know that you're really about me. <laughs> Aaron might not like that, but it's cool. Go ahead, Aaron. You can tell them about yourself if you want to. <laughs> anyway, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Aaron the Renegade. Thank y'all for tuning in. Got some fire coming for y'all today. And I'm actually really excited about this because when I read your profile and I saw that you were an advocate for men, mm -hmm. it actually made me more excited because we don't, there's not a lot of spaces where men are, I mean, women, sorry, are speaking. Um, positively right. and like uh, about about men, you know, mm -hmm. and so I think that's that's a, it's, it's it's a nice refreshing. A thing. Yeah, it, it is refreshing. I think it's a it's, very, it's a very much a different touch. Yeah, yeah I'm All excited. Right. I can't wait. And it's kind of ironic. So like, I actually posted something on my um on my Instagram today, mm -hmm. and there was a girl who was you know kind of like a, an advocate as well of men who's actually very popular and I didn't even know about. It's my first time stumbling across her. So, you know, I think that God has just blessed me with the right people to actually be talking to and watching. So maybe my algorithm is changing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump into the topic. Yeah. So the topic today is the evolution of relationships within the last 25 years. Has dating changed? Has relationship has changed? And we're going to go into the depths of that over the course of the last 25 years. So, our, yeah, our beautiful guest. Yeah, jump it off for us. Yeah, like, you can go ahead and jump it off. So, while I'm a men's advocate, one of the things that I advocate for men are to create a life where they can lead, right? Like, don't be with a woman who's not going to follow your program, right? However. I'm so sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, I'm listening. We say this all the time. It's called alignment. No, you don't. Go how, ahead. <laughs> how, however, I can express where men have gone wrong. Strike two. Y'all ready? That's my strike two. So one of the things that I talk about a lot, right, is I say that a great predictor for, like, where we are in the world is music. Music is a great determination about where we are, how we think, how we, um, you know, express our feelings, our emotions, and things of that nature. We were doing good with the R&B, right? R&B, all the love music. But then, insert Uncle Luke. Face down, ass up. That's the way. See, I'm already about to twerk over here, and I'm trying to be professional. So, no. So, here's the thing. I was actually just talking about this with someone, and I was saying that it's unfortunate that men have made an idol out of sex and made an idol out of, like, the video girl because... Since women are submissive and since we're designed to follow, women have followed in that. The thing is that we cannot control consequences to our actions. So the consequence, I feel, this is just my opinion, right? I haven't done, like, an extensive amount of research around this. But the consequence that I feel to having music like Uncle Luke, right, and having women flow into the submissiveness is, insert now, someone like City Girls. They're only following what the trend is. They're only following what men are saying is popular and they've made a business out of it. They've cut the middleman out. They're like, Oh wow. So I see y'all used to exploit women. 
tip drilling and all these things, you know what? I'm going to do that. Since this is what, what sells, sex sells, I'm going to be the sexiest. I'm going to get the BBL. I'm going to be the baddest. And I'm just going to cut the middleman out. And so to my point in the beginning where I said that, you know, music is a determining factor around relationships. Now we're hearing music around Birkin bags. We're hearing music around, you know, the size of a man's penis and all these things that he has to do and don't have sex with a broke man. The next generation is going to follow suit in that. It's a trickle effect. That's the consequence, a consequence that we could not foresee. Having someone like Luke, that is a man that, you know, is saying this is how I like to see women and women are believing that's what men like to see. Coach. 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 Can we... S- <clears throat> Strike two. <laughs> let's just... let's. All right, so let's also go right back... Let's go right back to that. And that, first of all, sure. I do agree a lot about, um, you know, today's music does show us a lot where we are, right? I think that's dope. But before Uncle Luke, mm-hmm. we had men crying, talking about, I don't want to know <laughs> if you're playing me. Keep it was it. after Luke. No, was it? Yeah. Yes, it was. Was it really? Mm-hmm. Way, before, way after Luke. Had, before Luke, they were having Really? Yeah. Well, maybe my... Listen, I was young, so maybe I heard it backwards. <laughs> but right. so even if, right? Damn, that's just from my everything. <laughs> yeah. But what I will say is... Mm-hmm. Before then, you had songs like, um, If You Don't Know Me By Now, You'll Never Never Know Me. Mm-hmm. You had songs like guys just crying on the floor, crawling on the Yeah, Tyrese used seven. to be crying. I grew up with all see, okay, when I don't know when uh, when did Uncle Lou come out? Do we know? Or 90s. 80, 88, 90s. Okay, there we go. So let's say I was born in ninety three, right? So let's say give me five years. So ninety eight now I'm kind of like conscious mm-hmm. and I'm aware. Right? I'm hearing men cry every goddamn day on the radio. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'd be damned. To be sitting here talking about, I don't want to know if you playing me. Mm-hmm. Maybe what has happened is that was the consequence that men had to face from another man, right? Mm-hmm. Uncle Luke got this girl and she's, you know, twerking out, face down, mm-hmm. ass up. And now we got men over here crying about their girls playing them. Mm-hmm. And now we got to a point where when do we draw the line, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so now it seems as if if that is the trend or have been a timeline since 98, mm-hmm. which is about 25 years ago, mm-hmm. it's only gotten worse. Absolutely. It, so so who do we hold accountable? So like now we got men crying about being played, and then mm-hmm. this turns into city girls and hot girl summers. Mm-hmm. You know, in the course of 20 years, it's like, well, when are, when is somebody going to draw the line? My thing is I don't even hear women. It's kind of disgusting to me. Like I can't listen to women rap. Mm-hmm. Before I could listen to women rap, Lauren Hill was a great artist, right? She kind of did both, but nowadays, I wouldn't really call Lauren Hill a rapper. Well, she made there was a lot of. I mean, look, she, she like, rapped. She's a lyricist. She she wasn't a rapper. Yeah, but like nobody's really a rapper <laughs> now, it, anyway. What, what did what, what is it about women rapping that turns you off? Well, I'm saying like today. Yeah, today's yeah rap today is. the context that mm-hmm. they use like everything. I don't think I know many women artists who are making music that don't refer to their box at least once Mm -hmm. you know i'm not where do you think that came from i think it it does my thing is this we can talk about where it came from Mm -hmm. and and if it did start with uncle luke i can align with that so understand what i'm saying too like we're talking about genre right so the genre of r&b back in the day and the genre of r&b today are similar the 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 context of rapping and the tip drilling type songs still exist today. What's different is that instead of a man talking about a woman's body parts and vagina, a woman is talking about it. So the genre has remained. No, R&B, they have been saying R&B has been dead for a long time. But there are... are, And the reason why mm R&B died was because men were like, I'm not about to sit here singing along with these crying ass men. And at some point in time, I need to man up and I want to love love, Mm -hmm. but the women that are buying into Uncle Luke are making me not even care about love. So now you have certain genres that are dying as certain genres are actually, you know, climbing the ranks. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that, you know, it's beautiful if you can go ahead and, and influence people. Mm-hmm. But people don't really care, I don't think, too much about the influence that they are causing. 
I agree. Right? And at the end of the day, whether or not we talk about where it stemmed from, now we're going to talk about individuality. A lot of these female artists and, mm-hmm. and artists that are present today wasn't even alive when Luke, Uncle Luke was out. Facts. They're, but here, but then you're, the process of a generation has to turn twice over, right? So it's a seven years in a generation, right? Yeah. Everything stems from some point. The day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. So just because Luke did something 20-something years ago doesn't mean that we're going to experience the consequences of it, just like the pandemic. The pandemic, you know, people feel like it's over, but historians are saying we're not going to really know what the effect of the pandemic is until for the next 10, 15, 20 years until we really realize the effects of it. Yeah, but we so know all the effects right now. So what no, you're, so we don't, we not, don't not know. Pandemic. I'm talking about the music of the well, music. Well, we are, we, are, we are in the generation right now of, of it being twice over in order for us to experience the change. So... Whatever R and B had, maybe that will have an influx in the next five years or so. We have women that don't really care about a man writing a letter, and they don't really care about being courted. They care to have a Birkin bag, and they care to be very logical, and they care to be very masculine because men care to make that the point of it being popular. So now we are getting exactly the essence of submission. Submission, right? We can't. We cannot control. And try to reconfigure what submission gets to look like. Can't. There's consequences to this. I, I'm just pointing out the consequence. Consequences can be good and bad, right? If if it is true that A plus B equals C, we're just going with the theory that women are designed, we're supposed to be submissive, that we just follow along, that that's how we're supposed to be, right? Then we get to look back at what women are doing and doing differently. Because if that statement is true, if that is what submission is and that's what women are naturally doing, then we need to look at what were the clues, what were the messages that men left behind generations prior that causes and elicits and and, and encourages changes in behavior. So as an example, right, long time ago, like I think maybe like in the 1800s or, or so on, they have, have actually have pointed that men control the culture around dress and attire. So back in the day, they couldn't even call piano legs legs because it was too salacious. Because that's how much men were controlling language. They're controlling how women dress, how long their skirts are, so on and so forth. Now we're entering into the 70s. Drugs is popular. Alcohol is popular. Pr- promiscuous sex is Bird popular. Bird control. Birth control, well, but yeah, because that was, exa- again, people take take these opportunities and create consequences from them that we could not foresee. When we, were, when, we, when we were doing drugs, we weren't trying to get HIV. That wasn't the intention, but it was the consequence. That's a good point. You okay. feel me? Yeah, but no. So, like, I do understand what you're saying, but, like, we're going to, so you're, in a sense, this is what I'm picking up, and correct sure. me if I'm wrong. We're trying to say that men created... Um, an emasculated woman. Well, emasculation is like for 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 the the masculine essence of okay, person, so but then degraded me, or let's let me rephrase it mm-hmm. then. We're what I'm hearing is men created the lack of submissiveness within women. No, okay, we so, are being submissive. It's just that you guys don't like the outcome. But okay, if who caused the outcome? That's the part that I was saying. The consequences I, I, we cannot control. But what I'm saying if is... If you have sex with a woman, right? Can you Wait, just, wait, wait. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I'm asking simple questions. I don't yeah. want to go any... I'm asking very simple questions, right? Mm-hmm. Who was... What came first? The mm-hmm. chicken or the egg? Mm-hmm. Was men the chicken, women is the egg? Which mm-hmm. one came first? And then the consequence follows the, mm-hmm. the whoever came first. So which one came first? Men are showing women what they're attracted to, and women are following that. I think that's okay. what I'm saying. All right, now let's. So, if that. a man is saying, "I am going to provide my attention," right? What do women want? We want community. We want connection, right? We want we want attention. If men are showing that their attention, that their eye gazes, are on the woman that's the bustiest with the smallest waist and the biggest hips, then women are going to follow suit. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I got to get to this point. Go ahead, go ahead, because I got something right after this one. Sure. Like, oh, all right, that was a good spin. Now, let's take all physical traits. And I already know that. We already mm-hmm. know that physical traits have been dictated by mm-hmm. what is being, you know, the promoted mm-hmm. or marketed look, mm-hmm. right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking mm-hmm. about behaviors, right? This okay. is This is an intangible. 
So let's let's identify the behavior. The so behavior we can get, is yeah. that we're. This is what I'm going to tell you. I'm just mm-hmm. going to go straight for it. We were talking about that, or I was hearing mm-hmm. that um, we cannot change the way that women are submissive. Correct. That's that's what it, that's what we we're can't saying? just make up yeah. random definitions for of, of, of it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So that means that the act of submissiveness in, mm-hmm. in this context. Mm-hmm. Should stay the same no matter what time and point that you decide to to identify, whether it's 1700s, 1800s, 1978, mm-hmm. or or 2022, right? Mm-hmm. So now when we start to talk about what has changed, mm-hmm. right? I believe, in my opinion, and there is some research that supports this that we've spoken about here on Eight at the Table. It wasn't a man mm-hmm. that decided, hey, look. I want you to go do this. More so life, mm-hmm. right? Because women started working, mm-hmm. right? As women started working while men were at war, mm-hmm. guess what that co- probably created? Mm-hmm. A exactly. lack of submissiveness. But this is not a man's, this is not a man's thing. This is not a, a music outcome. This was a life outcome, right? You have a country and another country going to war. Now mm-hmm. women have to become a role model and or head of household. Right. Mm-hmm. So now they're taking on a lot of the pants. Let's just say they're taking mm-hmm. on the pants. Now, there's a domino effect in that. Yes. So now what I just want because I'm because what I was hearing mm-hmm. and I just want to make sure that I'm not hearing this wrong mm-hmm. is that I don't I don't personally believe mm-hmm. that men are the cause because there is a cause and effect for everything because mm-hmm. you're talking about consequence. That's the effect. Mm-hmm. I don't think that men are the cause for this. Mm-hmm. I think that men are the cause for the oppression. Mm-hmm. I think men are the cause for the, you know, lack of consideration rights and everything negative that they were doing, controlling, mm-hmm. right, even to the, the attire of a woman. Mm-hmm. But I don't think men were the cause of this outburst that we're having right now. That's part, that's part of the, that's what I kind of mean. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe I'll intend to drop the bomb of Hiroshima, but the consequences of it, I can't control that. I'm a, I'm a me- as I said, I'm a men's advocate, right? So when I work with my male clients and they want to be the leader, be recognized as a leader in their home, there's there's a way to, to execute that. And part of some of the greatest leaders are the ones that consider those that they intend to lead. Some of the worst leaders, think about in a work environment, the worst leader ever is the one who comes in, he gets hired, he's the new president, he just starts changing shit. He doesn't know Sister Mary over there whose son is paraplegic and so she needs to be out on Thursdays because that's the only time physical therapy he can get it or whatever. Like he doesn't care about anybody. He's just numbers driven. That for the most for the most commoners is like he is the worst leader. The best leaders are the ones who take the time to get to know people, know what 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 makes them thrive and what's gonna make them work for them and have integrity so that when he's not looking, they're still keeping up with what he says that they need to do. Yeah, so but, when I when but, I work with when I work with men and I help men understand is that the leadership that you're craving, there's a way to arrive to that. And it doesn't mean that you are a leader because you're a male. I, I, right. So what I'm saying is when it comes to submissiveness. Right. And a woman, a woman being agreeable, women can be agreeable 100 percent. But you have to also take accountability for the parts of her that are showing up that are related to to decisions and choices, trends, behaviors, and things that you're focused on. So when men show women, I care about how you look. I'm a tra- And I'm not saying that you guys are wrong. I'm saying if that's what's being heard, then women are missing the other aspects of a man that matter, such as femininity, right? That's, not being, no, that's but, now being spoken. But, what makes you think that the way that a woman is wired is going to determine how feminine she can be? <laughs> because you watch people take L's. So is that is that wiring or is that is that is that that's nature versus nurture? It's, so is that her nature or is that her environment? That well, I believe that wiring changes. Mm-hmm. So, it, for example, we have a a term that we all know is called reprogramming. Mm-hmm. You can reprogram a lot of people, mm-hmm. but you also can't reprogram a lot of people, and that mm-hmm. needs to be understood because there are people that are too far gone. Mm-hmm. There are men that will never be able to lead because they are too far gone. Mm-hmm. There are women that will never be able to be as feminine as women 
I guess are, are that naturally are that naturally are feminine that's my because point. they are too far gone. That's my point. If you need to get far away from someone, then from something, that means you have a baseline. Well, what I'm saying is, so if they're coming far away from masculinity, and someone's coming, and I agree with you, right? I, I actually think that we have some parts that we agree more. There's just the semantics that might be different. We're having I, different conversations. I truly believe. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. I, I, yeah. I agree with you. It's a hundred percent correct in that. They're, they're far gone, yes, and that means that they have a baseline. When you look at the primitive responses, right, so I'm just, like, a lot of my history, a lot of my, my learnings is, like, primitive responses, how a person's brain is wired. I agree with you. There's reprogram, there's neuroplasticity, there's all these changes that can occur, right? What I'm saying is that I do want men to benefit from their relationships. I do want men to feel like the king. I do want men to feel emotionally held and feel like they can make decisions. But I want to support men in order for them to achieve that by helping them understand primitively what a woman needs in order to arrive to that. You can't just come in an environment and say, I'm the president. You have to do what I say. No one's going to recognize you as the best leader. So now let me also flip this script on you real quick, sure. because that that sounds poetic mm -hmm. and, and idealistic, but mm -hmm. that's not the reality for a lot of situations in, in 2022. Mm -hmm. Because at some point in time, we got to start taking into consideration mm -hmm. that some men can be as considerate as they want. I don't want a man to be considerate. I want to be decisive. How about decisive, yes. mindful, yes. knowledgeable yes. about how to get a woman to do what it is that he wants her to do. Mm -hmm. And there are some women that are not going to be receptive mm -hmm. because this is a two-end street. You're talking about two lost individuals now. Mm -hmm. So now you have a man trying to battle... It, a, a man trying to battle himself to bring him to a point in time where he is now able to get a woman mm -hmm. who is battling herself, mm -hmm. right? So then that way they can, I guess, find the roles of femininity and masculinity within a relationship. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen for some people. Is not what all. you heard me say? I, what I heard you say, right, is that men need to learn a woman. Men need to learn women to the point where that they can know how to basically get them to be the woman that they want them to be. I mean, listen, if you pay attention to your woman as a man, right? If you pay attention to your new woman, you and you obviously know that she's had exes in the past. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of her faults mm -hmm. as she's going to see of yours. But we're talking about your example. Mm -hmm. So now as you start to see her faults, you're going to be like, OK, this is definitely out of pocket for most men. So this is probably the reason why this one failed. And you can kind of go down the list. So for me personally, right, my girl would think that she can go out and she could not actually have to tap back in. Mm -hmm. Right. It's unacceptable. Men are not going to be comfortable with you. If, if you got, if you came home and you went just to sleep and you did not let me know that you were home, this is not negotiable. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and I can see that she lacked communication in a lot of her movements, mm -hmm. which, you know, was a whole thing that we had to go through before we even got into a relationship. Mm -hmm. So these are things that were uncomfortable. These are things that were new for her. These are things that she's like at first was like, well, nobody. Well, I don't care. They didn't do that. And maybe they didn't tell you that's one of the things that they didn't like, which is one of the reasons why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now as, as in the same in the same aspect as a woman you need to know your man to get him to be able to do the things that you want him to do exactly. right so now when you're doing all these things that no man has told you because they probably expected it which is not good you know you can't just you're not nobody's a mind reader mm -hmm. now you're having all it's a snowball effect it's a snowball effect into a failed relationship mm -hmm. so what i think alan is saying and what i'm picking up from alan is it's not about your comfort it's not even about your consideration. It's not even about knowing you. It's about knowing what is the blueprint to where you want to go. We're saying the exact same thing. I believe that, yes, right? So we'll use a car as an example because guys always think that it's so funny that women have cars and they don't even know what the C and the H means. When it gets to H, they think that she, she thinks it means hello. She doesn't know where the oil goes. She don't know anything. It's like, why do you have a car? You want this car to run, right? For me, I run on water, right? What? This is, I like this one. <laughs> I love water, but I'm not going to put water in the gasoline tank of my car because my, my car needs gas. It's my responsibility, if I, if I like the opposite sex, to get to understand it a little bit more and to not conflate it to the point where I'm, I'm treating you like I think every man wants to be treated. Because I feel like that's where we go wrong. If I'm going to be in a relationship with you, I want to know what makes Rico tick. 
I like yes, am I gonna take impressions from what I understand about men? Sure, of course. But for the majority of our relationship, we're gonna co create that and design that together. There might be things that you haven't experienced yet that you don't even know that you like. But if I stay curious enough, we might find that out together because that's partnership, right? And vice versa goes for a woman. Right? I don't want a man putting something in my tank because that's what makes him thrive. I want my man to put something that is inside of me because that's what makes me ignite as a woman, to, to ignite my feminine essence. And for that, that requires protection. The only way I know that you can protect me is if you know what makes me feel scared. What makes you feel scared and what makes you feel uncomfortable is not the same thing for me. Like if I walk down the street right now with Rico, right now, right, and it's broad daylight, and I walk down the street with Rico right now, and we get to we we get to an impasse and Rico has to go this way, I have to go this way, I promise you, the moment that you walk away from me, I promise you, I will become super hyper aware of my environment. Where just two seconds ago, I was walking in la-la land, feeling very comfortable. All of a sudden, without major change, the only thing that changes is that my, the masculine presence is not next to me. Immediately, I feel threatened. But that's... Be okay, all right. It would be, I agree. It would behoove a man to understand it because let me tell you why. As a man, when you understand that a woman's physical nature, her presence, her emotions, her mind can feel uncomfortable instantaneously, as a man, you will say, let me walk you to your car. Let me... Let, ca call me... Stay on the phone with me until you get to where you got to go because I want to know that you got there safely. I think that I feel as if and I'm just going back to the beginning is when we were speaking about being a male advocate mm -hmm. and, and trying to get them to have the relationships that they deserve within the woman. 100 percent. Yes. I really think you're a woman advocate. No. And, and because it's, at the end of the day, it's. Think about it like this. Mm -hmm. I would think a male advocate, in my opinion, is someone who's going to actually, because what I'm seeing mm -hmm. is men changing how they treat women or they're not changing, but now they're really putting their foot down and a stamp on treating women a certain type of way because of the response of the women that we have been now have to be accustomed to, mm -hmm. right? The woman has changed more than the man has changed in the last 25 years. I, you don't think that men have become more feminine? I, well, I think that men have become more feminine, yes, mm -hmm. but not all men. I think that most women have become more masculine, and it's my opinion and, my, and what I'm seeing, right? And it's, it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of societal roles that have just played. Listen, it's it's a two parent household. It's a two parent working household in 2022. Women have to work. 25 years ago, women were probably not there wasn't as no, many women 25 years ago women had to work no 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 not as many women was working in 25 was. years ago was, maybe it like was. 75 years ago 50 years. 50 years ago okay even if yeah. we go back to 50 years ago whatever the case may be that's a that's one generation away one and a half generations away mm -hmm. so like that was still a fresh fresh working generation now it's like i don't need a man now it's what why do i have to listen to a man and we both make the same amount of money I make more than a man. Why would I listen to him? So now it's like that man, a lot of men, I should say, mm -hmm. are not going to be able to, we hear it here. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it because I know how to do it. But a lot of men are not able to deal with the woman who possesses that type of strength. Right. So it's like a, it's, it's not a strength. It's a it's a mass weakness. And I know exactly how to pierce through that. And I show men. How, how do you pierce through it. that? Because women try to use their money to intimidate men and most men yeah. fall for it. Y'all, can we. Th so this is the thing. If we go back to allowing her to give a breakdown of how she helps men, what her findings are, how, then these questions we don't have to ask because we're, we're working backwards. Am I. Am, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we're working back. Take over, Aaron. Let's go. No, I ask take the, over. <laughs> no, no, ask your questions, guys, because we don't get it. Please, so yeah. please, please yeah. explain to us your work. Sure. Can I your... have your notepad since you know it all? You don't need to make notes. I do make notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you good. Um, oh, Cassandra, Cassandra, go ahead, because <laughs> I'm so just I, telling you, I don't, I don't see how you could train a man to be a man, but go ahead. No, I do not. <laughs> I said. definitely cannot, will not, never will be equipped to tell a man how to be a man. Wow. Never. I don't even know where that's that came from. It's not even what she said. I don't know where that came from, but I don't think they have the capacity to. I don't think anyone has the capacity to, and I don't recommend that a woman ever does it. What I do, if I'm an advocate, right, if I'm an attorney, right, and I'm advocating for my client, I'm going to tell my client to avoid doing things that are going to get them in trouble.
I'm going to advocate for men. And when I work with men and I talk to men, and we have very candid conversations, so it's an extremely safe space. I work with men to help them understand the pitfalls that are being created in their relationship, how to avoid them in order to get the response that they want that's long lasting. Because so to your point, Erin, so when I work with men as a relationship coach and I'm working with men, I receive and I understand it depends on how we want to go. So if we want to talk about healing, that's a whole different conversation. Some guys do need it. And that comes from triggers. When I work with men, I talk to them about feminine energy. I talk to them about the biology of a man and a woman, help them understand from a primitive response. So as a woman in our feminine nature, which I do believe like in the word of God says that the woman is a weaker vessel, right? I help a man to understand what that means, what he can interpret from them and how it will apply to his relationship. So first he's understanding what a woman is in contrast to a man, okay. what hormones are at play, what estrogen does and what testosterone does, right? As an example, you guys have testosterone, right? Testosterone automatically makes you more confident. It gives you more strength, more stamina, right? So already we are, we know that baseline. Stamina is debatable. Yes. <laughs> so we know that about, we know that that's what testosterone provides, right? So much so that when men get older and their testosterone drops and their estrogen increases, they get man boobs, they get more tired, they become more sensitive. It's important to understand what hormones are at play. What, is, what makes her tick? What does she want? Timing around sex, right? So when men tend to think about sex, a mistake that they often make is they wait till the end of the day to initiate sex. And our minds don't work like that. For a woman to be interested in sex by the end of the day, she needs periodic touches. Touches not necessarily meaning physical touch, but check-ins. Baby, you're sexy, you're beautiful, you smell good, you tasted so good last night, I'm still thinking about last night. I, when, I, when I work with men, I had a guy client said, my wife hasn't put her head on my chest in two years. They have kids. Like, that breaks him as a husband. You think that men want sex? You think that men just want to be told, to be telling things all the time and to get things done? No, men want partnership. They want to create, their, they want that best friend in their house. They want to walk inside of their house and feel like they see eyes light up. Men actually care about these things, but they don't know how to generate that. They don't know how to create that. So once he starts to understand his woman, I teach him leadership skills about how he communicates, communicating effectively, right? So as an example, babe, you know, I want dinner done when I get home. No, I'm not doing no dinner. Huh? She's like, no, I'm not cooking. She was no, 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 no. <laughs> you want to say, so the question is, you want to ask what's going on. You might find out. We got three kids. They're under three. By the time you leave, I swear, I promise you, by the time you get home, I don't even know where the day went. So as the leader, you get to troubleshoot, okay, what, in order for me to get dinner done, what do we need to create? What system do we need to create? Because she might want to have dinner done, but for her managing three kids under three and one of them is on her boobs, that's extremely challenging for a woman who may not have any community, any support. It might be very difficult. So it's kind of like... So it's, it's, he it's, takes it's, the burden. Who? So he takes the burden. What makes... So, so who... I feel as is if... She, is she burdened? I feel like we have to hold people accountable. Like, that's all it is. Like... Mm -hmm. uh, if she, whatever she's going through and whatever he's going through, because he can make the same argument. I'm working two jobs, so you, I can take care of you and four and three kids. Mm -hmm. There's four people in my house. I'm tired by the end of the day. I don't get to be able to talk to you and touch you. Mm -hmm. I only see you at night. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is where a partnership is is is. See, my thing is where I'm having a disconnect. Yeah, is that I feel as if majority of the work is being delegated to one party that's what i'm coming that's what mm -hmm. i'm digesting right can i say why are you hearing that but, all right well, hold because on. we are talking about men so when i work yeah. with women the conversation is very different when i work with women the accountability falls heavily on whoever i'm speaking with my goal working with a man is not to coddle or or coax what he's going through in the same way it's not my goal when i'm working with a woman I'm working with a woman right now, and she's married. And the thing that I told her, the number one thing I told her to do, I told her, stop thinking that you're the standard for being a wife. Stop thinking that you're the prototype, and maybe your marriage will do better. Because you think that you're the best wife ever and that any man will be lucky to have you. You don't know what your husband wants. That's how I talk to her, because she is the topic. So when I'm talking to men, being an advocate for someone doesn't mean that everything that they're going through is like, if I said, if I said it was the world's fault, right? 
if I said it was the world's fault, if I said it was woman's fault, what hope does a man have to design and create the life that he wants? I have to empower men and support men and understand how to create that, how to generate that by first also understanding what reciprocity looks like. I work with men who are in their 40s and 50s and they don't even know what they want from a woman because of what society told them they should want. And when they had it, they didn't even want it. Well, here's the thing. This, but here's I get what he's saying and what you're saying. But what happened in that situation? There, it was already being done, right? No. Well, he said you said in two years they yes. have kids. So that means prior to those two years, her mm-hmm. putting the head on his chest mm-hmm. was already done. Mm-hmm. Which means it was a there was a a fixing mm-hmm. uh, a, a ability to fix that mm-hmm. issue that had you know came across in a relationship, mm-hmm. but there are some relationships in mm-hmm. 2022 that mm-hmm. you just can't fix. I'm and not saying that not, they not, are. Not you, not mm-hmm. you, or not me, and I'm not saying that they are. I'm just saying that, like, in the sense of that man, there's nothing that he does, that woman, there's nothing that she mm-hmm. does that's going to be, you know, that's going to be able to make each other conduct themselves the way that they want to be. Well, Rico, so if that's the case then they need to make a decision to not be together. But that's right. what She's we're not, saying. We're, we're, we're saying. trying to say that we're trying to say that that's good, but re, but, but real find somebody that fits you. Yeah. So this is the thing. And people are lost. Women are lost and men are lost. And then they're getting together and then we're having people try to tell us how to not tell us but mm-hmm. teach us how to get what we want out of somebody who don't even know themselves. Mm-hmm. It's not happening. So I I'll, I'll give y'all a, a very personal example. Um I realize that words can cut. Mm-hmm. I realize I have a slick mouth. Yeah, I do. realize that that I, um, even if I'm not trying to be aggressive, even just the way I talk with my hands, it can come off aggressively. It can it, it can totally change my message. And one thing, like, and I've been in therapy for some years now, one thing that I still have to consciously work on and check in and talk to my therapist about is how I communicate with my husband. Mm-hmm. But I went to him with that problem. I was like, and I, I see a, it's a black male therapist. I'm like, look, I understand where my pitfalls are. I understand. You just need tools. Right. Mm-hmm. And I understand because my husband has expressed it like, I love you, I know you, and I know you're not really coming like coming at me a certain way, but the way you talk sometimes, it, 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 ain't, it ain't bringing the best out of me. That's, mm-hmm. These are my words for him, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. I see the problem. I know what the outcome is. Now what's the solution? The solution is me finding tools, mm-hmm. talking to somebody to try to figure out, like, why am I even talking like that why 100%. why do i speak with my hands yeah. why you what? know and i got a deep voice so like the shit is just all like it she can just be aggressive you know and that's not what i want to portray to him i know but Aaron, i know your husband right mm-hmm. so i i don't mean this in any kind of way and i'm just gonna ask you have you always talked that way to everyone you dealt with before your husband has that behavior been always the same yeah with every man? But yeah, but I've never had a desire to change it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but so this is what I'm trying to say. And this is, and, and I, I love this example because this is what I'm, this is exactly what I think me and Alan were trying to mm-hmm. say. Some people are who they are. So let's just say this is Erin. Mm-hmm. She's been working to change it. She needs the tools to change it, mm-hmm. per se, right? But at the end of the day, more likely than not, more at the end of the day, more likely than not, Erin's going to be this way for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And so what we're But I have changed. Uh, no, we, no, you have progressed. So, so, yeah, I have progressed. But, but you have not changed and so you and you won't. Understand, understand the context. I think like to Aaron's point, right? We're talking about relationships and this is a broad context. I work with people who are married, not people who are looking to be in a relationship. No, she's married. So yeah, that's what she's saying. Yeah. All right, cool. She works with my demo. I, no, I, I'm, just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my homie right so there. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here like grabbing a host of men yeah. and saying, oh, let me help you be the best man that you can be. No, 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 no. I'm working in a very controlled environment, which are men who are already in relationship. So some things. And they want to stay. Correct. So some things were working. But some things are lost, right? So the things that might have been working in the beginning, such as like, oh, well, he used to take me out. He used to do what she's basically saying is like, I I felt like I mattered to you. 
Well, to your point, well, now I work, I work three jobs and we got four kids. And so I have these responsibilities. Okay. Well, what does mattering get to look like in this context? Okay. He wants dinner done by the time he gets home. You're feeling like you have three kids. You can't manage it all. What does him feeling supported as a husband get to look like by the time he gets home? These are conversations that get to happen around capacity and around compassion because you're already in a relationship. Now, if you guys are wanting to expand the conversation to the outskirts of people who are dating and looking for love, no, 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 let's that's keep it. A let's keep it. No, no, no. Let's keep it where. Let's keep it to yeah. what yeah. your your if your profession. My is. niche is working with yeah. people who are already in relationships, so obviously something was. So there's inve there's an investment. They're married. Yes. So. And there's miscommunication. Some of that miscommunication is, so when I work with women, right, is do I think that a man has to always do foreplay? No, I don't, especially in marriage. Like, I don't think foreplay always has to be there. I don't think that, you know, um, like, I do think sometimes, yes, women, you want to be able to provide for your husband his physical needs if, if that's the need, right? Alternatively, when a woman hits 30 plus, her sex drive skyrockets and the husband feels like he can't keep up with it. Things get very tricky in a relationship when we're talking about this this controlled environment. Most of what I what I do around coaching and what happens in coaching in terms of in marriage has to do with what are you guys willing how are you guys willing to meet each other based on the needs and how are we going to look at trauma and things that predates you that's being triggered that's flaring up like my trauma is is on autopilot in this relationship and I didn't know it. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. uh, just just out of your professional mm -hmm. um, data, I don't, I don't have a better word, right? Mm -hmm. How many people you think that got married with the person they really wanted to marry? Probably very few. 10%. Probably very few. So wow. if exactly. most people that you know in your profession mm -hmm. got married to the person they don't even want to be married to. Exactly. I didn't say that they don't want to be married to no, that no, person. No, 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 no. So I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I yeah. just want to say what, what I'm saying real mm -hmm. quick. Because this is for real, right? You're making it sound like they got married to somebody they don't no, want to be no, with. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Okay. Got married All to I'm the wrong saying person. is like mm -hmm. majority of people are married to somebody that's probably not their first or second choice, mm -hmm. right? People marry to somebody because of different reasons. It could be different circumstances. It could be stability. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, what's that thing? The clock start ticking. Mm -hmm. It could be a hundred different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. this is, which is a fact. This is not maybe. Mm -hmm. um, oh, girl, you just turned 29. Betty, Sue, and Kim, they got married. You out here looking nuts. Your mother's putting pressure on you. You get you married. Got, you got yep. pregnant. You got. So what I'm saying is like, Mm -hmm. Most people that go into this union, mm -hmm. they don't usually, it's, it's very few people that go into that union mm -hmm. honest with the person they want to go on that journey Most, with. And the reason why is because their expectations were warped to begin with. <laughs> no, but... So, so, so the reason why people go into these relationships, they get into these relationships and they quote unquote settle, newsflash, majority of people are going to settle. Newsflash... The key to a healthy relationship is the willingness to change. If you're going into marriage to be exactly who you are, please don't do it. Like, just don't, because you're going to change. It's, like, virtually impossible. There's no, there's no way you're going into a relationship like that never changing. You want to be with somebody that you wouldn't mind being like. So if you have to be in a relationship with somebody that you have to change, shift, alter, maneuver, don't do that. Right. The problem is, is that when people go into relationships, they go into these relationships and they've lost somebody because they had their expectations all the way over here and they're trying to bring it down. And so they decide they're going to be in this relationship with this person, not truly vetting them, not truly understanding who they are, what is going to take for this relationship to grow and to blossom. Yes, people get into relationships for a, a myriad of unhealthy re reasons. But the number one reason is because their expectations are wild. Yeah. So what I'm yeah. saying to you is this. And now I, I, what I'm saying is this. You take a girl mm -hmm. and you take a guy. They're going car shopping. She doesn't know what credit is. She doesn't know what money is. He doesn't know what credit is and he doesn't know what money is. Yes. They're oblivious to it. Right. Mm -hmm. The first car they see is an expensive Mercedes. They say, I want that car. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they're like, well, you could take that car, but. This is the payments. It's three thousand dollars a month. Right. And they're like driving for a month. They're like, I can't. Then the, I want that car. I want that. I want that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when they experience life and get beat up a little bit, and reality <laughs> starts settling in of mm -hmm. what they really could get, they want that Honda. They get the Kia. <laughs> 
<laughs> the kid all the dependable. <laughs> they want. They gonna get that so, Honda. They've experienced all of this, and mm-hmm. then they're like, "That car is the car. You're gonna get the mm-hmm. payments." Now that you know what payments are, now you know what credit is, Mm -hmm. now you know what maintaining a car. You know what happens when the Bugatti breaks down? One tire costs 12 grand. Facts. Right? One tire, 12 grand. So now you experience the Bugatti, Mm -hmm. and it was sitting in your house for years because you didn't have the money for the Mm -hmm. the tire. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So, oh my God. So now the Kia is here. And the Kia's payment mm-hmm. is one ninety nine a month. Yep. Very affordable, yeah. very comfortable, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make you happy. And that's what people have. But this is what you're in. Wait a minute. You lost me there. Because I'm going to say why. Because <laughs> in mm-hmm. my opinion, mm-hmm. a lot of people that I talk to, mm-hmm. I'm always inspired by happy relationships. Mm-hmm. I love to see it. Mm-hmm. I love to see communication. I think Aaron said it one time. She was like, at the end of the day, is this the person I want to be? Mm-hmm. Like, when I'm going through my stuff, that's going to happen. Like, things like that I love. Mm-hmm. But most of the times, <laughs> when I see relationships yeah. and marriages, they be like, well, you know, it's the best I could have done. Well, part of that is like, it's better, people, people it's better get into than relationships. A, it's better than Halo. <laughs> <laughs> shout, oh. out, shout out to oh. any girl named Halo. The, I think so, part of the problem is that people go into 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 marriages unadvisedly. Yeah, no, but mm-hmm. Aaron, what yeah, I'm that, trying to it's say. It's easy to get yeah, married. Thank you. No, but, it's easy to get. You want to get married? The cameraman's right here. We could get married <laughs> right now. Like, all we got to do is just trip, trip, trip. No, so, y'all, no, no. Y'all but, missing but, the but, point. But, but what I'm saying is. No, I get his point. My opinion is. This is just my opinion. My opinion is. People would not even believe Mm -hmm. if you open yourself up, Mm -hmm. that Kia sometimes is better than a Bentley. Yes. If you learn to understand that vehicle, if you learn to do that, it's better than a Bentley. Okay. But what happens is that people, most people, refuse Mm -hmm. to accept that. Mm -hmm. They would rather... Mm, yeah, they would rather die yes. with the Mercedes. And, and, we we and, agree. We and, agree. y'all, you're literally saying the exact same. Nah, thing. no, we're no, not. We're not. Yes, saying, you no, are. we're not. I'm so not. He's saying. I get what you see. Where he's saying the same thing. Sounds like the by same accepting as what you have, by learning what you have. That in that context is the same. But accepting what you are value, accepting what you qualify for, is the difference. Cars break down. Mm. Relationships go through wear and tear. True. We're not going to compare six months of dating to 13 years of marriage. Okay. We're not going to compare it, right? Because the wear and tear is different. The part where you lost me at, because I think I, I legit believe we, we agree on a lot of fronts, is that they're with somebody that doesn't make them happy. That's part of the high expectation that I'm talking about. Nobody should have the ability to make you happy. And I'm going to prove that because I learned a big secret very early in my life, okay. which is I was 24, married, black woman, educated, You're... master's degree. Okay. Yep. You got married at 24? Yep. Sweet age. To my, to my high school sweetheart. Okay. He was I... Haitian? Yep. <laughs> M- yep. What's your name? <laughs> Jean. <laughs> St. Pierre. Max, 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 John. St. Pierre. John St. Pierre. No. And we were married, high school sweetheart. Right. One, we're, all, we're all one and only. And I had we had more money that I needed to spend making great money. You know, we didn't get married because somebody got pregnant. We didn't get married because anybody's parent was forcing anybody. We got married and we were in this marriage and I was unhappy. Was he good in bed? Yes. And th- yes. So you were with him for over eight years. Yeah. And then you were unhappy. No, no. What I'm pointing You were satisfied or you were unhappy? What I'm pointing at yeah, is Yeah, which that, one? Which one? You were unhappy or you were unsatisfied? Well, why were you unhappy? And we can Ooh, figure can out if you were unsatisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it was like, like Yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like y'all take Cuz you can't like, just throw this out there. Like you dated somebody for a I'm decade saying, and was what unhappy. The thing is is the secret is is that I could not rely on him to make me happy. I did not know that it was my responsibility Unhappiness. to figure out what that looks like for me. So I was unhappy in the relationship, right? Not necessarily because there was a lot going on in there and, you know, much of which that's personal and I don't want to, you know, that's somebody else's business. It's his business. We're not together. You guys divorced? Yeah, we're divorced. Can, can I just, was there any cheating involved? No. Okay. No. So that's why I said, like, there's... Was he making as much money as you? 
honestly. We made we made about the same. As a matter of fact, I wasn't. I became like a, a stay at home wife for a little while. Okay. So basically, I, if you to give us a, a small amount of context, and I do have a daughter with him, so you know I don't want to put too much out there, but. Um, you know, he we we decided to transition from a New York life. We moved to another state. I became a stay-at-home uh, wife. All of the things that I attached to my my mattering were gone. Because you took are you from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. You can't take a Brooklyn um, girl and bring her to the birds unless you know what you're doing. I didn't. This is a thing. Unless she's I, ready. <laughs> uh, this is a thing. I thought that it's not about the burbs, right? Because you, now you're saying like she's from Brooklyn, like as if the streets were offering me something. My 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 worth wasn't attached to the streets. My worth was attached to the accolades I was getting in school, being educated, being uh, going on tours to present my research. All of that was gone, but my identity mm. was attached to that. So no, it had nothing to do with Brooklyn. It had a lot to do with where I was at school, which was Columbia University. So if we're gonna like throw all Girl, that, out got, there, that's now you talking. Now you want to eat at the we're table. Throw some stuff. Yeah, out there, now you want to eat at the was, table. Let's that go. Was, that was stripped from me. Okay. Not by, and it wasn't intentional. He wasn't trying to like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna ruin her life. Nor was I thinking. I'm at this point. I'm Unintended 27. consequences. Yeah. I'm 27. I don't know that moving to another state is going to be such a, a huge shift for me. Had no idea. We thought it was going to be the best move of our life. This is again and, going back to what I was saying, which is people not knowing themselves. You didn't. You were attached to you, mm-hmm. and you got out of you mm-hmm. and went with what he wanted from you, and then now you guys were what, unhappy. What, what did he want from me? Well, he, he wanted that you that I didn't want to stay at home, wife. You you wanted something, but you Who didn't. Said I didn't want that. Okay, you know what? You, you wanted it. it, but that's not what you, you wanted. Left. No, that's not what you, you wanted guys, for you. you so. Understand what I'm saying. I learned. That's what I'm saying. I learned the secret, right? What's the secret? Tell us the secret. The secret is that you have to do your own inner healing. <sighs> you have to do your own your own inner healing. I wanted to be in the burbs. I wanted to be a stay at home um, wife. I wanted. We we joined. Twenty seven. Yeah, younger than that. And I'm gonna tell you why. My mom worked a lot. Okay. And I did not like that growing up. We had conversations at sixteen what our life was gonna look like. Okay. We abided by that, but what it looked like and felt like was very different than what we imagined it was going to be. Wait, do you realize that <laughs> at an early age you were following your mother's footsteps? How? College, Columbia University, educational accolades. Mm-hmm. That's still work. A lot of work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now what we have to do, and this is what I'm trying to say. Which we wanted to get away from. No, it's not we. Like, forget about the we. Mm-hmm. People are not being real with themselves, and they don't know who they are when they get into these relationships. So how, how do you, so, how do you, how so do you this imagine is what I'm a person with figure what that looks like? Well, the thing is, you need to figure it out, right? Wow. Well, By being honest with yourself. By being honest wow. with yourself. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Wow. In my opinion, just from your story. Mm-hmm. Aaron, this is just, tell me if this is making sense what I'm asking, right? No, because Aaron is like my, my baseline right now because I know I'm not coming across to on this because I might I'm, be coming across crazy. Yeah. My bad. So my but bad. I'm just getting past so, <laughs> there's, there's some real There's some real things that you're not saying that I would like to, and I don't, I don't want to go into your personal business. Yeah. But at 27 years old, you're a very accomplished woman. You're a very pretty lady, and you're very smart. Mm-hmm. There has to be a point that... Most people don't want to admit in relationships mm-hmm. that you look at the relationship at 27 years old and you say, can I do better by myself without no. you or, or yeah. can we do better together? So to be clear, you, it was, there you know, was like there has to be like everybody has that, that thought. That's, that's why so, I don't like bringing personal things, because now you guys, there are lots of reasons why people leave relationships that could be around personal things that I don't, again, I have, because I have a daughter with, with him, with your, your ex-husband. I want to respect her and Fair. him, right? And, and we'll re- so There's, you know what? Let's, so let's, we could change yeah, the subject. We'll talk about something else. Right? So overall, right, mm-hmm. when people are in these relationships, do they not know themselves? That is correct. What is the best way to learn who you are, what you like, what you don't like, than by being in a relationship? You learn so much more about yourself. There's lots of there's lots of variables that can happen in a relationship. So you get to discover it in terms of who you want to be with. That's why I like what Aaron said. Is this the person that I feel like I want to be with when I'm having a bad day, when I'm having a bad season? Because that's sure to come. That's that, that, there's anything that's predictable is that. So choose a person what? that choose a person that you can be friends with. It's a, it's a, a little poetic because yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm I'm say something like this. The reason why I say poetic, I look. 
You just said you were the dude you feel safe, right? When you were just giving the story earlier. Mm -hmm. There are women. They've been with you. Ten years. Mm -hmm. Still don't feel I'm talking safe. about, no, no, did she feel safe? That's true. She feels That's safe, true. she's happy, everything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about she's good. Mm -hmm. You guys happen to go out, boom, boom. Something happens and some cats, some dudes walk up and pushes your man or something happens where he doesn't defend you, he runs or he just gets scared. Mm -hmm. He reacts with fear. Mm -hmm. That woman at that exact moment mm -hmm has left that man where he's at. Mm -hmm. Her feelings are gone. Her emotions for him are gone. Everything that she loved about him is gone. Mm -hmm. Now they go back home. Maybe she don't say nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. But that whole dynamic is gone. What I'm saying is like relationships are more based on dynamics. Mm -hmm. There are dynamics that exist in relationships. When the dynamic goes missing, mm -hmm. people don't want to really say what's going on. Do mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying to so, you? And there's no coming back from it. And and it's, some of them you point, can yeah. come back from, yeah. but I would say there are key ones that you cannot come back from. So nice. you're pointing to a feminine and masculine experience. No, no. Yes, yeah, it is. It is. I guess it is feminine <laughs> and masculine. Yeah. But, I but we try to do no genderism. No, I, use that, I use that example. I use that example. But What you're describing is a primitive response, is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this this exact reason why I use the example with the car, why I talk about gasoline and water. I'm talking about at the baseline, primitively, how, what, it, what drives a woman. A right? hunter. Okay. If when, he, he, when, he, yes. if he can't hunt and bring you nothing back, if you mm -hmm. talking yes. primitive, like you, yes, go, you don't want nothing to do with that. Absolutely. And what do women do? If he's the hunter, she's the gatherer. Right. And what do again primitive responses? If you look, do you at all know what gatherers need to do in order to gather? Like, but I don't think like that because if my wife is a better hunter wait, than wait, me, wait, she could go out there and do it, and I'll gather. I think like that. But I'm a better hunter. But what she's talking about? <laughs> talking about primitive. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of gatherers do a lot of stuff. Like yeah. what? Um, first I of all, hear. they make sure that the the town the is good. Mm -hmm. They they put the the whole community together. Mm -hmm. They actually sometimes the gatherers map out what the hunter's gonna go do. Mm -hmm. They create more. Um, they make the hunter's job easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They take care so of that's everything. That's a lot of work. It's a, tr it's a lot of That's strategy. A lot of it's a lot of it's thinking. Here, like, it's a lot. You're doing what your mom was doing. You're working. Like, no, no yes. what I'm trying to say, work. what I'm saying is, because if you want to, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. I think that people are not being honest with themselves and their mm -hmm. journeys and who they are and why they are the way that they are. And we had Stefan Speaks, shout out to him. When he was Big on here, out. I said how I figured out who I was and why I was the way was by writing down all my flaws mm -hmm. and then letting it all pour out and then stemming, you know, and dying and peeling back the layers and that no one's doing the work on themselves and they jumping into read. marriages yeah so it doesn't matter what you coach it doesn't matter what therapy you seek you mm -hmm. cannot change you because you can identify where you came from and that's my that's the point that so i'm making so you don't think that that's what happens in sessions or when they get coached like they're discovering who they are i don't think that a lot of times they if are honest if no. A lot of therapy is not, a lot of therapy is coping, a lot of therapy in 2022 is coping and coddling mechanisms. A lot of people go to therapists to pour out their emotions and pour out, you know, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, just like a doctor, not every doctor is a good doctor. Mm -hmm. Not every therapist is a good therapist. Mm -hmm. But but wait, hold on, Miss Therapist. <laughs> so, but, so, so these people are mm -hmm. going to seek help mm -hmm. trying to uncover situations mm -hmm. and sometimes i'm not saying it's all the time that people aren't finding out who they are where they are or, or where they came from mm -hmm. but what i'm saying is by that time sometimes it's too late you already been 10 years in a relationship 10 years in a marriage mm -hmm. and you just found out that 10 years in a marriage that you talking with your hands is never going to change <laughs> so now so now we have no to it does i do change it Manage it and changing is different. You're managing it. <laughs> is, 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 oh, the is, goal is, that, is to be. Is, is that not okay? a bad thing? Yeah. Right. If you if, can manage if it, unless that's what, if that's as long what as it I don't takes, do nothing to trigger it, so if, you if bring that's it what up. it takes. But that's, that's what, and that's all it if takes. That's what it takes. Is that okay? No, because then this is what happens. Let's go back to the car theory, right? Mm -hmm. You are a car, and I need to know my car. You run on gas, not water. I got to put gas in that car. Well, guess what? If the transmission fails, and I'm not a mechanic, and I know no mechanics, and I have no money for the mechanic, I cannot physically repair this relationship. These are the dynamics and momentary things that are happening because you already had tra transmission problems before I even started to drive you. What's, what's, 
Okay, if I don't have the money to pay so for it, he doesn't it. have the means to do. Yeah, so so so, what's so, so question, now, what's uh, but the, but here's the mm-hmm. thing: if I knew that she was a Kia, mm-hmm. right? With shout out to Kia, with a with a transmission issue, <laughs> I may car. have. But look, ready, <laughs> Alan. Here's what here's where I want to button it up. But yeah. if I knew that she was a Kia yeah. with a transmission issue. Yeah. I would have never invested in it to begin with because I know I don't have the means to fix the Kia's transmission. I, okay. No one, I, I, no one should be fixing anybody in a relationship. You're supposed to be working said, on yourself. I'm really talking Cassandra. about the problem, not the person. But what I'm saying is like it's the reason... It's like when guys go overseas and they're like, oh, the women treat me so good because you're an exotic traffic to her. This yeah. is a fact. Is... Yeah. This is and, a hard... And, and the, wait, 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 hold on. Let her finish. I'm just saying, check carefully. I've been there. I'm good. I know you've been there because you visited. You didn't live there. I did. You didn't live there. I did. You're not. You're not dating them for a long period of time. And I did. If you did. Why didn't you marry her? I was going to. Alan told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you at the table. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm no, saying? Like, I, I agree. It's like when I lived in Miami. I used to love Miami yeah. when I visited. When I moved there, I was like, "Get me out of this fucking place." Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so, I know. I know so how that. Big shout out to Miami. Miami. <laughs> we love so Miami. He might. He, he might have a woman that lays puts her puts her head on 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 his chest all day long, but there will be something else, and they can work through. She that. don't cook. Yeah, it, it's it's always gonna like, be something. Uh, yeah, it's all, that's why you. That's why you. That's why you want to yeah, generate. But some some things are not as like for example, if let's say. I'm just making this up, guys. It's not real. If me and Aaron were dating, right, ten years from now, mm-hmm. and she was talking with her hands, and that doesn't really bother. It's something, but it's like, yo, bro, stop. Mm-hmm. But if it wasn't something that bothered me, but now let's say if that was something detrimental to her previous relationship, mm-hmm. that's something. Like, so now we have to figure out what our real somethings are and where they belong, where it's not going to be a priority, you know, detriment for or, or deal breaker for our spouse mm-hmm. that's what it is that's what she's that's saying no that's not what she's no, saying she's, she's saying really? that the girl didn't put her head on the dude's shoulder no, she she gave her training she trained her to go that's put her he, head on the did, shoulder did you, did you notice that i'm sitting here looking at him like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you you because that's what i'm saying you, but, but you, you, you but no you trained that saying. woman to go back to put her head on her man's shoulders who trained her not, Training is the wrong word, but I, uh, I just told you him trained to do, him to do it again to no, get her to do it again. No, no, no. I just, yeah. I just helped him to understand how a woman functions, what he can ask his woman specifically, and do things differently. And in three days, that's what happened. I had another You're magician. Client. I had another client <laughs> You're a magician. who had a girl. They met. They had an amazing sex life. First year, boom, she got pregnant. Had their first baby, sex kind of went down a bit. Had their second baby, sex is even like, it's like non-existent. Now they're six years in, he's miserable. I told him what to do, like two to three things each each day. They didn't, each thing didn't take him more than a minute. I mean, I'm literally exaggerating if I said it took him more than a minute. For seven days straight. I have the text messages. He text messages me like, what, what was it? Like, um, I could barely sleep. Like, she, like she, she, she took over. Not only not only did they have sex, she initiated. She hasn't initiated in five years. He didn't buy her a bag. He didn't take her on a trip. He didn't simp himself. He's not losing himself. He's not doing any of these things. Like, it's none of that. I don't want... There's, men are amazing, right? Men are amazing. Masculine energy is attractive, is sexy. There's nothing about what I'm doing that's going to leech that out from a man. We need more of it, not less. So... I don't have men simping themselves. I don't have men, you know, doing the most. And when I talk to men who are, like, in a really bad relationship, I tell them, choose a woman that chooses you. Choose a woman that wants you. Not for the things that you can provide for her, not because of the trips that you can give to her, because these things, they fade away. It's about what you, it's about you. And that is a thing that I want men to know. What a man wants, what a woman wants from a man, most of all, and Erin, you can tell me you're married, she wants you. What men have a problem with understanding and, and accepting is that men are being conditioned to believe that it is the money. I'm not saying that men don't need to provide. Yes, provision is amazing. Provision is amazing. But I promise you, when a woman loves you and she is with you and she feels that connection to you, it's you that she craves. I, again, I'm not. that's like saying, like, as a man, when a man is with his woman, having a bad body is amazing. Sure, absolutely. 
being able to hold down the house, is that, that amazing? Sure. But what really ignites a man is the agreeableness and the friendship. And agreeableness is not about being a yes woman. It is about a woman who's going to say yes to the larger vision. So that yes might look like a no sometimes. Because you might say, oh, I, you know, I got the money, I got the bag, I'm about to buy this. She might be like, no, that's not the vision. But yes, put the money here. That's the kind of woman that a man that a man wants. That's rare as fuck. Oh, it's, it, <laughs> that's rare as fuck. But you know what? Now, now, I mean, I now we're getting. I agree. It, it takes a, Cassandra. Yeah. Come on now. I, that was the best thing she said all night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could have got there a lot sooner. Thank you. Thank you. You should have started. If she, she could have gotten a word no, in I edgewise. Think, I, think, I think the Luke thing threw everything. You know off. what I think? I get Using it. Luke for the baseline. Yeah. It just threw I us love off. That I used you Luke. should know men. She wasn't using <laughs> Luke for the baseline. I was just saying. I was saying. I was giving an example to talk oh about God. how powerful men are. How powerful music can be. How powerful what a man puts his attention towards can shift history it is a proven fact and if men embrace that they can conform the way things get to look from here on out you need to know that not to blame yourself you need to know that so that you can shift the culture the culture is heavily predicated around sex and what and what a woman looks like because men show interest in that Y'all are interested in it. Y'all pay for it. You know, process. Okay, stop, stop. But stop, we don't want to own it. We don't want to keep it. Are, there's some things that are inevitable, mm -hmm. and that's what I want to want to never forget. Mm -hmm. Prostitution is the longest occupation in the history mm -hmm. that we know. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's never going to that stop. And, air. and guess what? Back then, mm -hmm. when we talked that and air, yeah, prostitution. But was it respected? Wait, wait, uh, was it, was wait, it stop. Wait, hold on, was hold it on. Hidden or was it highlighted? Miss Coach. Yes. It was. Desired. I don't even care if it, no, I don't care if it was hidden. I don't care if it was highlighted. It was desired, which means that desire is the longest lasting desire, which is called lust, and it's never going anywhere. Okay. So the reality is, the reality is, it's not about what the men truly desire, because what they're promoting and, and the culture is shifting towards mm -hmm. is lustful or lusting ability for certain types yeah, of women, and right? So, and in some, some countries that will never be accepted. The, in some I countries, get that. Okay, and so those women are never going to act like that. But we're Men not in those want, countries. We're exactly, in a, but, but we're in, go to those countries um, pining over those women no, we or don't. in a society that would never have those women being portrayed like that. Then you go over there and you come back and you say, oh, our American women don't act like this. Our American women don't treat us like that because but those women over there, but you know why? You can't that, ever act like but, that. But, that's, validity the, to but it, that's the problem that we're saying. We're saying is this. Mm -hmm. You have women that won't ever act like that. You have women that won't ever be like that. Right? So I, are we wait, 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 hold on. Them? Hold on. I did not cut you off. Mm -hmm. Right? You tried to. No, I, I was going to because I was cut <laughs> off first. But, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is there are women in other countries, if we use that, that example, that would never act like that, right? And can't act like that. Can't. Right? Exactly. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. You're almost on strike three. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. Right, I'm with you. Uh, uh, yes. So now what ends up happening is we want what we know we all want. These are blueprint things. So then we come back to America where it's non existent. Mm -hmm. So now my thing is this it's non existent here, but guess what? It's been non existent or it, not non existent, but is this variable of lustful women mm -hmm. have been here since the golden ages of prostitution mm -hmm. and now what we need to do mm -hmm. is not be like yo this is how you get a woman to do this learn the woman so you can convince her manipulate her and get this part out of her that she possesses no this is what we really need to do is be like yo listen ladies mm -hmm. men men if you are acting overly feminine you're going to have a consequence consequence mm -hmm. women if you are acting overly promiscuous and overly masculine mm -hmm. this is your consequence and people need to understand understand their consequences mm -hmm. that's what i think it is because it doesn't matter about how much i learn this woman this woman hasn't learned herself there's nothing i can do to make her know herself she's still suffering for whatever life has handed her since the day she came out of her mother's womb and now i'm dealing with all the backlash so why why are, i'm dealing with all the backlash of her traumas so why are you choosing wait, wait, why are you choosing wait why are you choosing? I'm answer. No, but but you don't know what the question is. Oh, why am I choosing? Go ahead. Why are you choosing to be with a woman who has clearly shown you that she doesn't know who she is, and 
if, 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 if her if her not knowing who she is is an issue for you. <laughs> Yeah, I cannot. If her not knowing, you understand what I'm saying? If that isn't, if, if a person, if a woman not knowing who she is is a major issue, red flag for you, mm-hmm. why are you choosing to be with that person? Well, Aaron, I'm so glad when you ask me questions like this because I can't wait to answer. Swing that camera over to me, please. <laughs> My goodness. Because we have, I'm, I, I love you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to just use it as an example, and this is no judgment. We have women that don't really truly know themselves. Mm-hmm. So we're buying into the woman that is being presented to us. And then once we're married for X amount of time or together for X amount of time, and now she's realizing that certain things that she's desiring mm-hmm. are just temporary desires, and it's not what she really wants for her, mm-hmm. we are already committed and so invested. You sound like you sound like you're talking about life. Uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to person, say. I just wanted to say that. You are wait, wait, can I just get? Not the person you're at thirty. So what Cassandra, are we really talking Cassandra, about? Cassandra, can I just get like that was a good answer? Wow, y'all are haters over here. It's not. Bring in the date box. <laughs> if you have the date box, what? so let's catch Doesn't a commercial break, everybody. Right, here is the date box. Listen, listen, I, have, listen, I, have, I, wanna... I have a question. I have a question for Rico. Rico. I have a, I have a question. No, not. No, Wait, not. Marie, Marie, hold on. You're not a mask. Mic. It's a misunderstanding. Uh, I agree with Rico 100%. There's, 100%. What are the chances actually for the both of you? You know how many women change once they get a ring? 99%. Okay, cool. So so if this is known amongst men, right? And I'm not saying, listen, men may change when they get a ring too. I'm not speaking from a woman's perspective. Mm-hmm. But men know even when she gets a title as a girlfriend, she starts acting different. If she gets a baby, she starts acting acting different. If she gets a wedding and a, and a, and a ring, a woman starts acting different. Mm-hmm. So it's like for you to ask me the question, how do we know? I don't only go, I'm only going to know as far as we go in this relationship what she really is and what she truly mm-hmm. You know, possesses within her. Yeah. I mean, what are the ch- I, 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 honest question? What Cassandra are the chances? Has a question. They're gonna be revealing themselves later on. Yeah, that makes they sense. They do. But don't you make the decision at that point to, to stay or not? No, you're already invested. What are, what are the what are the odds? I spent so you're much money in. and time. What are, what, are, what, are, what are the odds that a man? Your down payment is already. Oh, yo, yo. I have a on, question. On. What are the odds that a man who knows himself? Who is at this at the stature at the level that you're describing that a woman should be at? Mm-hmm. Knows who he is, knows what he wants, knows what he like. I mean, just decisive. It's not going to change. It's not going to waver. What are the odds of a man like that attracting, being with, entertaining, and marrying a woman who doesn't know herself? He's never he's never pinpointed that she wavers. He's never observed. So yeah. what does that say about him? No, and his vetting what, abilities and what, his process. And this is what I say, like right. First of all, nobody's off the hook for getting the wrong partner. You are just as much to blame. Okay. Right? I agree but, with that. But what I will say is, what I will say is, it is also a two-way street. And I will say that I do know that there are people, and I'm a man who's dated many women in my life, who can do whatever it, whatever they need to do mm-hmm. to get wherever they want to be. Mm-hmm. So if she wants to be married, she will cook and clean every goddamn day till she gets married. Mm-hmm. Once she gets married and that cooking stops and now I'm less affectionate to her, now I'm less texting her, you smell so good, I'm thinking about last night because I haven't eaten in three days, I was ordering <laughs> Chinese food and Papa John's, right? So now you're, see look, when you get to certain places, and this is a, this is not just a woman thing, mm-hmm. when people get to a certain destination, they tend to get comfortable, mm-hmm. and that's the real issue, because then once they get comfortable, they start pulling things and revealing this mask mm-hmm. right and now it's like well damn you I, used not, to but not, Rico, I'm gonna I'm give you one i'm sorry cassandra it's, I'm not, give it's you... not a mask it's a it's, it's a version no There's, yes and you guys were just talking about it right the same woman who is like you know so prim and proper and she doesn't want to do anything mm-hmm. get her with the right guy and suddenly she is like this sex vixen uh, yeah There's, all the time there are a number of versions of us in one being and it is about who we're attracting and what parts of us we're attracting. So you play parts. Exactly. What Instead of telling me this is all of Wait, it. So y'all, many... if y'all would just let her explain Jesus Christ. Okay, oh Aaron my God. Candy. Because, like, she's trying to get the shit out and y'all won't let her. My bad. I'm just saying, there's, you guys said it, right? To your point, yes. There are women who won't have sex with this guy, but she'll have sex with that guy. So that means, does that mean that she's inauthentic? No. It means that that guy drew out a version of her that was in her, whether she was aware of it or not. What I'm saying is in relationships, right, if you're seeking a certain version of your partner 
and this is a person that you are invested in, right? We're not talking about dating, right? We're talking about marriage. It will behoove both parties to get to know what is it going to take for me to ignite that part of you to come out because that's the version of you that I really enjoy. That's the version of you that I miss, that I long for. So as an example, right, like with my, with my ex, right, he, he required a certain version of me. And I didn't know that I had other versions of me until I started to date and got a chance to know myself. Don't I could have told you you have other versions of you. I look at you and tell you right now. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm a coach, right? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I didn't. I didn't. You know, we don't know the thing we that we're not, the thing. <laughs> yes, because life has taught us so. Just like I know now, so, right? In so my the as, version of you, the version of you that you discovered dating is much better. No, it's just different. Okay. This just it's just different. I still. Which version do you like to be the most? Because this is reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which or not like to be living? I should say. Which one do you enjoy? Well, yeah. for me personally, on a personal level, I'm going through like a significant healing journey. So that's a whole different other topic. Probably won't even be that entertaining, to be okay. honest with you. It's always but entertaining. It's, I, I love those stories. Okay. Well, for me, I'm I'm really into self discovery and paying very close attention. So I'm in, I am in a relationship. Right. So I pay very, very close attention to who I am, how I show up in my relationship and how I'm encouraging that to come out in my man. And what that what that cost me was paying very close attention to me and stop looking at him. Stop looking for him to do and to be and for me to focus on me and how I can encourage the parts of him that are already there. That took a long time. A long time to <laughs> to get to that point it started out with me asking it started out with me hinting it started out with me wondering why and then it shifted to me being focused on okay hold on a second I noticed that he's more easygoing when I'm easygoing so it would behoove me not to manipulate him as you were interpreting it but and for me to show up as the woman that craves the parts of him that already exist, it's already there because I've seen it, which is why I want it, because I've already seen it there. A lot of times what happened with that couple that I was talking about is that version of his wife that wants to put her head on his chest, she's already there. She's already there. But he lost his way, and I was helping him, giving him some breadcrumbs to find his way back there. And, of course, what happens, it goes away. And so we get to look at both. What part? How are you showing up as a husband that created an environment where your wife wanted to put her head on your shoulder. How are you showing up as a husband in other ways where she don't want to give it to you? You get to look at both because just like she's changing, rest assured, so are you. A woman who is cooking and cleaning and doing all these things nine times out of ten, it's not just that she just miraculously changed. I'm not saying that there aren't women that are like that. There are women who, who do that and there are men who do that. What I'm saying is that it's a contribution and you want to focus on your part. Stop looking at your partner. Stop blaming them and start focusing on yourself. So when I work with men and I'm working in, in, in the dynamic as a relationship coach, working with a man, I teach him boundaries. So when they send me text messages of their wife acting crazy and I ask them, did you address it? And he tells me, no, he's I give him a slap on the wrist. Why is your wife thinking it's okay to talk to you like that? So you, you she's it's coaching behavior, but yeah, behavior. She's yeah. So can I just say something There's to you? There's no just, way a god. No, I, mm-hmm. I, I think your services are very, very well needed for those men. Yes, for those I do, men. I do. Yeah, they, so I'm gonna say something to you, right? If you were with a guy that you're about to marry, right? Mm-hmm. He got a nice car. Mm-hmm. He's always on point. He got a nice apartment and everything else. Mm-hmm. Four years, he's just doing all of this. He proposes to you, you marry him. Mm-hmm. He buys a house, you know, things, all the, everything. Five years has passed, six years has passed. Mm-hmm. You in love, everything is good. Then one day you go into his office and you were looking for something, then you mm-hmm. open it up. Mm-hmm. Then you look at some bills. He has leverage mm-hmm. to the tilt mm-hmm. to impress you. To show you who he is, right? Mm-hmm. Did you deceive yourself? You know yourself. Mm-hmm. You you were not thinking about that. You got a whole lot of self healing, mm-hmm. but now you discover this, right? Mm-hmm. And then you found out you at the brink of where everything is about to fall apart. Mm-hmm. That's the same way that Rico was saying a woman could play a part mm-hmm. for a very long time mm-hmm. until she gets that ring, she gets that thing, then she has the baby, then she's like, no sex. 
no sex. Mm -hmm. Don't touch me. I don't want this. I don't want that. So what happens is that it's just that holdout syndrome that it's not that you don't know yourself. It's that sometimes the person you're with or the person you think you linked up with ain't really that person. Mm -hmm. And we're not. And, by the, and when you discover that, mm -hmm. it could be a hundred things. That's people that people don't even believe this. And as taboo as that sound, mm -hmm. that's people that will leave you because you're boring. Nothing else. What I had? You're, they're just bored. Don't let me open my DMs and show you how you're, many you're, women you have said that. that. Question: <laughs> Do you think that it's the women are just? You don't think that the women are just changing? Because we did agree that changes is is guaranteed in a relationship. No, nah, because and I, and you're I, because you're saying the woman has a kid, she changes. The woman gets married, she changes. So no, I'm just talking about from the woman's part, right? But the man thing is the same thing with the money thing, right? No, but, he, that, but no, he 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 wasn't changing. He was never who he said he was. No, but the, but see, but yeah, he was I see what you're saying. It's not the same example. It's not same. like because That's one thing is. And she's talking about the terms, like the terms on saying. Like he's 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 doing too much. Like he he's over leveraging himself. And women over leverage themselves sometimes but to get married. That's, that's not. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't think. I don't think that's no. But they're not the same. No, like no. I, I agree. I understand. Literally, you just said a woman sh she'll change. Like, she had a baby, she changes, she gets married, she changes. Okay, we agree that changes... Right, is, he just lied. Yeah, that's the difference. Thank you. He just outright lied. Thank you. This is talking about... Or this, maybe this is, he was not, just not informed of who he was. No, well, I mean, my thing is this, right? Well, uh, let's... I just want to ask her a question. No, but, but, I know, but, Alan, can you... Look, because I get what he's saying, but what I'm trying Alan, to say is this: Where's the Marie? We hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what I'm trying to think, say I is think, this: I think what she's looking for in terms of apples to apples would be like, you know, he got married and he stopped taking her out on dates. That's what uh, I thought was yeah, coming. Like, actually, to, to, to give a, a, an example of like how these things shift, I think that's what she was saying. Like saying that somebody. I, I, like this is this is a different situation where we're, now we're talking about a complete breach in trust. We're talking about someone coming into the office looking for something, <laughs> opening the door and finding out the whole like, life. Like the whole the whole life is like up yeah, is upended, which I get the the aspect of like, you know, it's not honest, but But that was a version of him, like you would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's was just a version. It was a temporary version because he lost it all. Can, yeah. can I, can I, can I, I ask, ask you a three questions? No, right. no. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Let me. You better be good questions. You've been writing down all day. I mean, if, if y'all would like be quiet and maybe let her talk, then then we'd probably be further along. But anyway, so the dynamic, the, the whole topic of the show is the evolution in, in relationships and dating. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a question related to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Which you could have, but you didn't. <laughs> um. So what I want to ask is, the dynamic in dating with millennials like th this is this generation is totally different from the generation before and the generation after mm -hmm. um and they're you know in the mar marrying age and and having kids age and this that and the other so how like what do you how do you help men who are like in this millennial age group dealing with millennial women because i will agree gen x women are not the same as millennial women. Mm -hmm. Gen Z women are not the same as, you know, as millennial women. So, like, how do you help them navigate that? Sure. So, a lot of it, we start with communication. And we start with communication because a lot of times what happens is, is that guys are in a relationship and they f feel like they're clear on what it means to be a man. I am clear I'm supposed to pay the bills. I am clear I'm supposed to do these things. What exactly is she supposed to do? Right. And so when I ask guys, what what are some of the things that you want your wife to do? They get stuck. Why is that? Because they don't know. According to like their language, what I've actually heard is I don't know what I'm supposed to get. Literally, I've heard that from multiple men because they're so as an example. Right. Right. So like to because when we like give these broad texts of, of communication, it gets lost. Back in the day, a man knew he was supposed to open the door for a woman, right? His, his, his gender role is clearly defined. Now things feel very muddied. I work, she works. She could watch the kids, I could watch the kids. Like, he's losing himself. He's losing parts of his identity as being a defined masculine. So then we have to figure out what that looks like for him and what that looks like as far as like what he, what he would like for his wife to do. That he may not have vetted for in the beginning because 
He wasn't afforded the opportunity to think about what his defined masculine role is and what a defined feminine role is when we're both doing the same exact things. We're both in school. We're both working. We're both paying all the bills. So what exactly, how, I, how do I feel needed? And what exactly do I get to want from her? So every man's, the, the, the outputs from that is, it varies from, from man to man. But the key here is giving him a space and an opportunity to even be vulnerable enough to say, yo, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know what the hell this marriage is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be giving into it. I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting from it. So it's like they're roommates. I know people use that rhetoric to say, like, we're just, you know, coexisting. But I don't like that term because we're talking about legacy. We're talking about children. We're talking about trust funds, LLCs, and building from this. We're talking about our children's children eating from this marriage. Can't do that as a roommate. It's not even conceivable. So I don't even, like, put those two things in the same breath. But do you think that do you, think that you could really have both? What's that? Like, if the way it sounds like to get those things that men were able to have back in the day, mm -hmm. a man probably got to earn at least a quarter million dollars or more. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that's the starting point, which mm -hmm. is like five percent of all men in the country. <laughs> you know what I'm less. saying? Like the way it sounds like maybe 50 years ago, you only needed forty five thousand dollars a year to get that kind of attitude or behavior in your home with your wife or whatever it is, because 40 years ago, a house was I think like you could buy a nice house for seventy five thousand dollars, a beautiful house at that. Absolutely. Yeah, because I remember my dad told me my dad helped somebody buy a brownstone in like 85, 84, 85, mm -hmm. which they sold for like two million dollars. Mm -hmm. He said he helped them. The house was thirty six thousand dollars. Wow. And then the dollar was stronger. Mm -hmm. There was That's money took you much further. So it's like when you move into the 90s and you go into the 2000s and you're like, OK, um, I'm making 80 grand, but that's not enough. Correct. Now, I need you to make something, too. And the things that I may want from you, I may not <laughs> qualify for. Because I can't Correct. afford it. I can't. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a shift in behavior. There's a completely different dating someone, I'm sure, and I'm not speaking for women, but I'm sure a woman dating a guy that makes a quarter million dollars or more mm -hmm. and dating a guy that makes $45,000 a year is completely different attitude that affords certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I always revert back to Maslow's hierarchy because mm -hmm. these needs have to be met. So that goes back to what I wanted to find out from you was like, yo, maybe our reality needs to be checked about where we stand in relationship and what relationship we qualify for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, 100%. Because there's a lot of things you can't do. If I'm working 11 hours and you working 11 hours. So if, if your client bring this to you, like how do you, like what are the tools that you give them to figure this out? I, haven't, I still haven't heard what exactly it is that he would want. Oh. What is it that you would want? No, but what I'm or saying that, is or that like. that prototype of an example. Well, I, I feel like. If you're saying we're doing legacy and we're building for the next generation, so we're partners and roommates, like, love comes second. It just doesn't feel like we can have both. Oh, you want to know if you can have, like, business and love in the same? Yeah, because I feel like me personally, my wife, mm -hmm. like, this is just us. Like, we legit don't care where we at as long as we're together. Mm hmm you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's not, we love having nice that shit. That must mean that y'all like, y'all like each other as no, much as y'all yeah, like each other. Yeah, we really love having nice shit. Like, my wife is super extra with the nice shit she likes. Mm -hmm. Like, she wants the Birkin type of life. Mm -hmm. But legit, if I told my wife tomorrow morning, we moving into a studio, like, it's, she's not going to be tripping. Why do you think that is? Because we fuck with each other for real. Yeah, not why do you think fake. that is? Because that's my nigga. That's my... <laughs> Twenty five thousand, Alan. That's the friendship, right? That's the friendship. That's, that's that's just my people's, bro. That's what I was. That's, uh, but I also sir. think that, and, and she wants you. 
Well, I, I, well Miss Ma'am. I was hoping that right. she but, loves but. you. She loves you. She loves you. The Birkins would be but, nice, but, but well. she likes you. You you I mean, you dope to her. Sweet, but also but we, she actually likes. likes. Right. Oh, it sounds but, but, and it, but wait, wait, but also I do a live we, I mean. Hold on come a second, on. one moment, one moment. Hold on a second. Let me ask you a question. Rico, right, right, right. Don't backpedal. Rico, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you. What what Alan has? Would you be mad if you had it? Would I be it. mad if I had it? Mm-hmm. But he has it. No, why would I be mad? Okay, so but it sounds so poetic. No, what I'm saying. So what's no, the, the poetic was you and Marie. It wasn't <laughs> Alan. Oh, wow. He po- said that's my no time, my, out, time my, out. My ninja. You're not. You're not. You're, in Brooklynese, you're that's the what sweetest I'm thing saying. I ever heard. Cassandra, <laughs> in Brooklyn, where I'm from, that's the best comp. That's very poetic. Cassandra, you gotta learn to listen a little it's better. Cassandra. It's Cassandra. Cassandra. I'm gonna correct myself. Ooh. I correct I like myself. That. As long as you correct yourself, I correct. <laughs> Jean. Jean. So look, the thing that's poetic is not because she wants him. Well, it's not only because she wants him. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because if he had done things mm-hmm. to change that, she can easily not want him. So like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, it's also a... a, a it, so so let me ask you a question. No, I uh, no, because I gotta get I gotta finish. Okay, I, go I gotta for finish. It. I gotta finish. Because I don't want you to segue because you, you go around the bend and like I'm No, I don't I'm going on the bend. Just just follow follow my lead for two I follow. seconds. I got you. We gotta be realistic, right? And it's not always because you just want this person so much. She wants me so much. It doesn't matter what I put her through. What I put her through does not matter. She wants me, and then eventually we're going to get there. No, I had a group of women here at 8 at the table tell me that being a ride or die was bad. Right? But That's, he just said his no. real life example. Not in, not, 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 not the, I don't know those women that were here. You do. He They're just, sitting right next to you. Just, so what I'm trying to said, say. Uh, he just said that his wife. Sandra, I need you. I, I just need you to listen. That's it. Don't speak. Okay. Just listen. I can do that too. I, when I'm done, you got oh, the floor. That, that was a submissive yeah, slick word like she did. That. But that's just me being, you know, because I know how to get it what out of her. What's the question? I, I, it's not a question. My thing is, me and Cassandra are cool. All right, guys. <laughs> Relax. We're still we're entertaining here, guys. So all right. So no. So what, all I'm saying is that is that this, Alan has held his end of the bargain up. Yeah, that, that, that is Ooh, true. Thick and thin, mm-hmm. he has still held his end of the bargain as so as Yumi. Shout out Yumi, that's my girl. You know what I'm oh, saying? Hi, Yumi. She has held her and they both held their end of the bargain up. Mm-hmm. So she trusts him, he trusts mm-hmm. her. So if everything was to crumble down tomorrow, mm-hmm. she trusts that, you know, they're still going to be together and they're still going to do their thing. Correct. There's a lot of men, right, who get a girl. There's a lot of women who mm-hmm. get a man mm-hmm. who really wants them. And it doesn't matter what happens mm-hmm. or matter, you know, what their situation, what comes into their lives. Mm-hmm. But then there's always that turning point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's that dynamic that then shifts. You know, like you went two years and you didn't put your, your head on my chest mm-hmm. and my mind. I he know didn't you, hold his end of the bargain. But, he but, did. But no, no, no. Maybe she didn't hold. Maybe, and that's what I'm Maybe. trying to get to. Somebody's Maybe. not holding the and, end and, of the bargain. But clearly, if he did something different, if nothing in their environment changed, and he's the only one who made a difference, and she and she and she responded, well, no. she submitted. She. This is a submission move. Be, like if mm. if nothing else changed, we have to look at the variable that that changed. He did something different. So and, to your point, right? Your wife, she asked with you. You said it. That's your ninja. I never heard a husband. I'm like, wow. I want. I almost want my man to. No, I, I actually don't. But I almost. You almost had me. You almost had me there. I'm like, yo, my man don't say I'm his. I'm his ninja. Like that. That. That's deep in Brooklynese. You know what I'm saying? So you. You. You held your end of the bargain. What I'm. What I want men to do is to is to be clear on what them holding their end of the bargain looks like with respect. Because you cannot. You can't just. You can't. Any man who's constantly doing and giving in a relationship, I agree, is a simp move. I don't agree with that. I don't want that. There are some women who are not ever going to be capable of, ha- of having a relationship, and she don't need to be in one. I agree with that. Same thing for men. I'm, I, don't, I don't dispute that, right? But every now and then, you know, we get a whole Cardi B situation who said that she don't cook and clean, but she know how to get a ring, and Offset recorded her sweeping the floor. 
So understand that music and culture is is causing people to think about things in a certain way, even if they don't live it like live it out like that. But and so, girl, young girls and everybody, right? We have we can agree that children have children now, right? Like young people are having kids, and they're not rearing them and raising them. So who's raising them? Music, technology, what's on TV, and they're hearing Cardi B say, "I don't cook, I don't clean, but I still got that ring." She, this little girl is now thinking that this is what it takes to get the kind of respect and relationship that she wants. And that's a fallacy. In the same way, men are over here sliding cards down women's ass cheeks, tip drilling, and thinking that that's what women want. And that's what's going to get her horny. And it doesn't. When you, you cannot compare the first two, three months of passion and sex to being in, being in a relationship and investing in it for 10, 20 years, that takes a different kind of approach. That takes a different type of commitment level and a different type of intimacy. That swiping a credit, man. Now you can't do that to me past two times. It gets old very quick. So what I'm saying is that I'm equipping men with understanding women in a different way because nine times out of ten, men are confused about that. I'm supporting men in understanding that boundaries need to be there. You cannot allow your wife to talk to you any old kind of wicked way. That doesn't mean that you have to put your hands on her or do anything like that. It means you need to address it. Like, hey, I get you as uncomfortable, but you can't talk to me like that. I do tell men to do those things. But why don't we tell the woman to just don't speak like that? That's like, mm-hmm. like, see, we're talking. If she's coaching women. Okay, let me, no, no, let me, let me. <laughs> but this is what I'm trying to get to, guys. This is what I'm trying to get to. Let's unfold it. Let's unpack this. Yes. Well, you have more men or women clients? Men. Okay, cool. So Intentionally. Do, okay, intentionally, unintentionally, whatever. Mm-hmm. You have more men than women clients, right? Mm-hmm. With these men. How many, if you had to give, uh, obviously you don't probably know off the top of your head. Maybe you do. I don't mm-hmm. know. You're a smart woman. What percentile of these men are seeking you, right, based off the suggestion of their wife? We're going to say bye to Instagram. Big shout out to the gram. Bye, IG. Bye, Instagram. Bye, IG. We're going to say bye to YouTube, too. Peace, All right, YouTube. Guys. I guess y'all will see the rest later. You guys on catch Patreon. it on Monday. Catch it on Monday. You can see it on Patreon later tonight or tomorrow. Peace. Big shout out. Bye Thank y'all. you. Bye YouTube. Bye Instagram. All right. So, mm-hmm. uh, what percentile of men, mm-hmm. right, are are seeking your help mm-hmm. and guidance in therapy? Mm-hmm. Um, coaching. Coaching. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, out of the suggestion of their wife. Zero. Okay. They so, weren't on their own looking for for that. And this is my point. So so we have men who are seeking to find ways to make their relationships better. Mm-hmm. Do you get more men inquiries or more women inquiries? Women. You get more women. But inquiries. I don't work with women because I want to keep my, I only have a, a, a small capacity and I don't want to give that away to women. A small capacity. Like okay. time. You don't want to be drained. Yeah. I, I can't work with every single person that reaches out to me. So I, get I do get a, more, like women do reach out to me. They want to work with me, but I don't. I try not to work with women because I want to leave my slots open for guys. So here's uh, like, I'm just using examples because this is what I've seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Right. So like we have somebody who marries a woman, Mm -hmm. right. Who he thought that, you know, her talking to him in a certain type of way Mm -hmm. is not going to be, you know, detrimental until they're married and it's persisted. Mm -hmm. Right. And now he's like, well, how do I get her to stop talking to me this type Mm -hmm. of way? The, and we can, you know, try to unpack that all we want, but that's not within him. That's not his duty. That's not his job. That's not yes, his it role. Is. No, it's not. Why? Because the, the, the reaction is the only thing that people control in this world, right? So if, so let's say if, like, he could be doing something I, let me small. Ask you, are they married or are they dating? I said married. I, well, then, they were dating. It was persisting while they were dating and got married so, and it continued to so persist. Is de- let, me, let, me get, let, me, let, me, let me parse this out for a second. Mm-hmm. If I meet, and I have met... I have met guys who are dating, and they meet women like that, and I tell them to run. I ask them, you want me to answer you like a coach, or would you like me to answer you like I'm your friend? Eight times out of ten, they say friend. Sometimes they be like both. (laughs) If I'm like a friend, I need you to leave now. And if they're saying, like, and and I'm being, you know, I curse when I talk to guys. Like they don't say, want you to curse right now. You can curse. Mm. The fuck? I, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm just She's like, on her professional. Yeah, I'm on my professional. Yeah. Right. The way I talk to guys on, a, on an intimate level is like. Because you was Mighty Hood in that can, conference room. 
I know he can, he can, you know, guys can call his girl a bitch, this, that, and nah, third, nah. and I don't. Nah, that's why. Hold on a second. It's a safe space it's for him. It's a safe space. Oh, oh, when he's talking to you. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's regular. The women yes. aren't involved. That's regular. Yes. The women are not So involved. naturally, if I'm, talking, time. if I'm talking to him in that way, I get as spicy if he's okay with it. But I'm not going to call his girl that. I'll just be like, yo, yo, you got to run from that bitch. Like, you got to be, like, leave now. Like, I have told guys this, but if you're married, and, you, and there's a commitment, then we get to unpack, how do we get here? Okay, so, oh, when did this start? Did this, did this just happen? Was it always like this? Oh, she was always like that. Now we have an accountability session. Now I'm trying to wonder, who in your life told you that, that it was okay to be spoken to like this? His mother. This is not okay. Yeah, and then we get into healing. He didn't have a dad. But my, I got a question for you, mm -hmm. right? That w one of our things that we want to figure out, eight at the table, is why are so many women single? Because they're doing what they say 50% of women are You single. want to know why or you have an answer why? No, no, I'm asking. I have an answer, but I will we'll we'll give your answer. I'm my curious. Answer. <laughs> she's a she's a men's advocate. But she has women she's a woman too, and she has women friends, I'm sure. And she also is a she also have women clients. Yeah, well, let, let, do, do you know the answer? No. Thank you. All right. So next I question. My, I have I have well, what's your opinion? <laughs> what's your opinion? What's I don't opinion? I don't think that men are clear about what marriage gives to them. I think they see it as a loss. I agree. So it doesn't make sense when you see how the legal system works. You know, men are afraid that child support, alimony, women are the ones that are usually asking for a divorce, so on and so forth. So in this generation where people don't have to get married, I don't need to get married. So why would I? Okay, because of the legal part, but I'm not even talking about that part. Forget I mentioned that as one of the things. No, but what I'm, I'm not even just talking about the marriage, Women. even getting to marriage. But mm -hmm. why are they single? Rather they just not in the committed relationship. Rather they they just like, you know, after a certain time, I see, like if I go to a, a 25 and older club mm -hmm. or 30 and over, it's like filled with women, mm -hmm. and they're all single. We like hundreds of them. And I'm like, how all y'all don't have a man? Like, all of y'all, none of y'all got a man. And you looking around, none of them got a man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Do they want to be single and just date casually, or are they looking for marriage? Nah, they want to be with somebody. Okay, it's just that so the chances are they're having conversations with men that they say, I want this relationship to lead to marriage. And if you have a large number of men who are saying, I don't see what the point of marriage is, then that would equate to why she might still, why these women might still be single because in the club. by and large, he set this scenario up. But I'm just saying, <laughs> but like those women in the club does, do not, are not saying, hey, I want to be married. Are you? Just, of course they. Alan spoke for them and said they do. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about these women, like let's say from 25 to yeah. 35. I asked the questions, y'all set it up. Let's, and well, I, well, maybe I heard the question wrong. What I'm saying is like, there's Why are those thirty-year-old women? No, I'm not I saying thirty-year-old I mean, women. Like the analogy. No, I said twenty-five to thirty-five. No, it's not. But Alan, you said they want. First of all, you spoke for them. You don't even know. You just assume they want to get married because they're like thirty. No, usually the women that I speak to, they mm -hmm. tell me they so want to be in relationships. Women in the club, mm -hmm. right? Talk to all of them. No, but you know what I realize with women like that most women in women the... single mm -hmm. is this. I, honestly, in my opinion. Mm -hmm is that women want what their friends have. Like, they want a relationship that they see their friends have. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm just I talking know. about from my experience. Well, you're married, and you're happy, and you're good. No, and, I'm and you've been fortunate. I don't even want to talk about you, Aaron. You're an exception <laughs> to the I'm rule. I'm just saying, like, in general, it's just like <laughs> women, <laughs> like, it's like women get competitive in a sense. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm saying that from a man's perspective is that we're the ones that pay for that. All like the, the good guys. I'm not saying I'm a good guy. I hope I am. But what I'm saying to you is like <laughs> the decent dudes <laughs> are the ones that pay the worst for that mm -hmm. because she wants all of that, mm -hmm. which goes back to the hotel lobby scenario where a uh, 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 WNBA, the stars, WNBA, yeah. WNBA stars, yeah. mm -hmm. when they go to that hotel, they ain't got 500 men in their lobby. No. It do be some men down there. My line sister used to play in the WNBA. Yeah. yeah. And so, one of my other good friends. Are, are, like women, are, are women in the NBA <laughs> like considered, it are ain't. women in the WNBA considered 
Some beautiful of them. and wanted Some and desirable. There's a couple in there that, even, even, but that's even, not. Do they want men? But even if I you follow take, one of them. Even if you take right. Cardi, like, well, Cardi B's married, so I don't want to use her as an example. Right. But even if you took a, a big celebrity female mm-hmm. when she's single, when she there's not a bunch of dudes in a hotel waiting for her. No, to, they're in her DM begging. Yeah, but the, but there's a hundred women. They're, they're, you're talking about the approach is just completely different. That's like somebody telling me like it's a compliment that men want to sleep with me. I don't care. That's not a compliment. It's not a compliment. I can if if I want it, I can have it before the night is over. It is easy. Three for times women. over. Yeah, it is <laughs> easy. Wrong. Men turn it's, down sex too. Don't do that. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying the likelihood of me do. getting it is about ninety nine percent. Okay. And then, now, you, now you got me in my whole Haitian vibe. That's that's what Please. I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? I'm in Creole. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you understand know I me? Mean? That's not a compliment. So so the 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 way that we're playing the game gets to be different. That's why I said before. I don't. There are certain. Th- I know my lane. That's what I'm saying. I know my lane as a woman. See, now you're I respect, talking about language. I respect my lane. I understand my lane, and I don't try to. I don't try to play a man's game. Nor will a man play a woman's game. So the reason why women are w- w- the reason why men are not in a at a woman's hotel vying for Punani is because that's not his game. His game is to go on her DM to see if he can even get access to her. That's his game, and that's his lane. Okay. Well, let's be realistic about game then. Yeah. Because the reason why Shivery is dead is mm-hmm. because that game became called Thirst. So if I start doing a lot and I'm texting you beautiful and I'm complimenting uh, you, yo, you getting hurt. I'm oh, thirsty you now. You all so I can't even hurt. be nice to you. I, that I, I agree. So now what I'm trying yeah. to say, and then and then on the flip side, so I say, forget it. I'm a being dog, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm gonna talk to you like this, mm-hmm. and I'm now getting success. No, women are clown you, bro, for being I, nice. You, these women that reaffirm these beliefs and get upset when they do exactly what they're gonna do. We have you never pick a woman who's emotionally intelligent and mature and that you say good morning and recognizes. Oh, thank you. I believe. Thank you. Good morning to you. I believe that most. Wait, quick, quick, quick question. We're women. We hang out with women. Mm-hmm. Do your women friends call men thirsty? No, never. Do do your it, for for good morning text whatever. No. Do, what about you, Marie? Do your what? No. And, and I'm going to speak personally, my friends don't either. No. no offense, ladies, but if you are 27 and younger, I, I believe it does because the it, men, the men, be. the men back then were different. The women back then of a certain age group and demographic are different. So now you got these younger age women who don't respect hospitality, who got these younger age women who now shun chivalry and being a gentleman so now you're right no and you're right and, and you know what they can go and kick it with the ignorant but there are future the ignorant, though um mm-hmm. but you got men who are on the same like level playing field with them Ooh. that was that, w- that was that you know what that was Tad up. that was you saying nonsense <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, you know, you know why that. Yeah, I'm happens, the same you know why I, that I, I, I agree. That's AR. I remember I was going out with a bunch of people one time, and this guy held the door open, and one of the ladies was just like, "Oh, don't open the door. I could do it myself." And I said, "Speak for yourself." Seriously. Speak for yourself. This is what I'm trying. This is Seriously. What I'm for, Speak for, for you. yourself. Thank you. I need women to check women because when men check women, we're misogynists. I told you that we're I narcissists. Check. I told you. I know, no, I, I'm saying I appreciate that, but that's what I need more of. It's like, you know, when we get to a point where it's like, yo, you know what? If if a man, it's like this. If, if me and Aaron are dating, mm-hmm. and I'm now, no, we're married, right? And now I'm raising my voice, and I'm talking really aggressive to her, but I wasn't doing that before. But then Aaron goes to seek counseling and says, well, you know what? What can I do to get him the nice side of him back out? It's like, nah, bro. He needs to check himself. She needs to check herself. These people that are doing wrong within the relationship, outside the relationship, need to be checked. And honestly, it has to be checked be, by the same side. Sex most times. Be- I agree, and it's not fair. That's that's the part that yeah. I'm having a problem with. Yeah. But this, this is a thing. Mm-hmm. I believe that as far as checking, like when I'll see stuff, like oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, you should not be in the comments. You know, I'll see <laughs> stuff, and I'll be like, you know what, this conversation is by women for women. Men, I appreciate y'all coming in, but 
don't come talking shit over here because if, if I'm gonna call somebody out, I'm gonna call the woman out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This like I'm I'm not about to check a man. I'm not a man. No I way. don't get down like that. Mm -mm. And really, it's your brother who needs to be checking you. Facts. It's your daddy that yeah. needs to be checking Absolutely. you. Yes, it's I your agree. homeboys that need to be checking you. It's your cousin, but but you know why they don't? Because they don't know no fucking better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and vice versa. In 2022, these women don't know no better either. Yeah. No women is checking women. That's why when I, agree. I when I Bad stumble behavior. across when I stumble across a woman checking women for what they do wrong, I am like in awe because it's so rare to me. I'm not saying that Marie does it. Marie is great. But what I am saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, I shouldn't laugh. I'm so sorry. I just, <laughs> I just think that it's unfair sometimes. It's like yo, because you know what? At some point in time, it's like yo, women had had the floor. When they were like, we're tired of men doing this, mm -hmm. right? Now we're all going to check these ninjas, Yeah, but right? And then, there? look, then ninjas had to check themselves. But now it's a point in time where men is like, yo, we tired of women the doing idea, this. The idea that I'm saying and is that... Now, that but, when, but, but what I'm saying is now when men take to say, like, yo, now it's time for you to check yourself, it's... No, you're misogynist. It's you get labeled with all of these things. You're attacking. You're aggressive. You're you know you're narcissistic. And it's like nah, you just need to check yourself the same way men had to check themselves 30, 40, 50 years ago because they was bugging. Well, now you're bugging. Mariko, are you okay? So this is the thing. If you want to check a woman, you need to talk to a woman differently than how you gonna check your homeboys. Yes. Because like I, literally, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. If I'm sitting here with my brother, and I, I think you met. My bro I don't know. Yeah. Oh, like, okay, so my brother... We family guys. You know, like a pretty big guy, you know. Like, even though he's my little brother, like, I'm still... And I probably used to do this to him when he was a kid, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I still try to talk to him respectfully. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I have big sister energy, right. I still try to, I respect you as a man, I respect you as a mm -hmm. person, but that ain't right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and you know, I have a relationship with his wife, with my sister-in-law, so it's like, I get her as a woman, I get her where she's coming from, but I'm also gonna ride for my brother, mm -hmm. but I'm also not gonna let him get away mm -hmm. with bad behavior, but I talk to him differently. I'm not gonna check him the way I check her. Yeah, right. and I agree, but at the same time, that's listen, the difference. No, it's not. It's, it's really no difference. No, I'm saying about, gotta, about misogyny. No, like, I, I think get that's it. That's why. But, but wait, but wait. Can I just say this? When men were bugging, I highly doubt when this whole like women's right thing that mm -hmm. I'm an advocate for, by the way. They weren't like, hey, guys, you should give us rights. They weren't talking to them nice. It had to be a firm, you know. Yeah, but they also stand. had allies that were men that uh, helped to, to move that needle. A, I, and that's true, I, too, but... I don't know if guys were responding to a woman's aggression or were guys responding no, to were, the fact that other men were present. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. So there's a, there's a lack of women being present. And that's the part that I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. we're... Listen, men talk to women wrong, and they've been married with them for 45 years. Women need to talk to women. Women need to be like, yo, listen, you saying that you want a hot girl summer... But you're not a real hot girl. It's all right to not have it. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like, like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I think, I think that I just thought about know, that. No, it's, it's, a, it's a rich AT summer. There. Actually, it's a rich AT fall. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I would rather rich with our sweaters. Hot girl. I have heard like one it of the things hot. that guys do tell me is that they feel like when I ask them like what pains them the most. One of the things that they said besides accountability, women showing a lack of accountability, is that by and large, and I, I didn't know this before, but that men feel like women are like inherently ungrateful. That was like literally like what they said. Like it was a it was a foc it was a I focus group. I promise you, in that focus group, it took everything in me to not cry. Like, I promise you, I was so heartbroken. It was crazy. I was not expecting that to be the answer. I prom I thought the answer was going to be like they don't want to have sex, they don't have like all the things that society says. The ungratefulness. Yo, you know how painful that is? When you're busting your ass trying to make somebody feel happy and feel good and so on and so forth and you feel like they're just ungrateful. I felt so bad because I was like, okay, this is unsolvable. How do I solve this? Like how do I The best thing that I could say is for a man to choose a woman that chooses him. Where where the kind of men that you guys are talking about, because y'all don't think y'all talking about y'all. Y'all are talking about a certain kind of guy. Those certain kind of guys go for women that don't want them, don't really want them. And they lead with the money. They lead with the, I could do this and I could do that. Now you're leading with this and you're auditioning for a role you can't maintain. 
Why are you sitting there giving her and showing her that you got all this money and you can't even maintain this lifestyle that you're saying that you want to provide for her? So don't choose her. Choose the woman, like you guys were saying, that you can qualify for. But nine times out of ten, that guy don't want that girl. He want the girl that want the Burke and the city girl, the big tatas, small waist, slim in the, you know, slim in the waist, big booty, whatever it is that he's looking for. Because there's something that's inside of him that's wounded that makes him feel like he wants to tote somebody around. That he can say like, oh, yo, son, that's you? That's you? That's yep. what he wants. And that's what I'm going to say to that. Ladies, stop giving the cornballs power. That's the problem. That, those are cornballs. That's dudes, the though. problem. Those, those, are, those corn are the cornball balls. dudes, though. And y'all no. give them power because they got money. Y'all give them all of this so confidence. What do, you, what do you think women should go for? Women are real fe- men. Real men. Women are feeding the egos of real lames mm-hmm. that are rich. Rich lames mm-hmm. who are simpty. You know what that sounds like to me? Rames. That sounds like why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Nobody it's no that. fun when the rabbit got the rain. gun. It's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. When men do that with women and they have sex with women without commitment, we tell we tell women, well, you gave it away. So why would a woman or these city girl women want a man who's strong and brute when she could get a guy to give her all the things that she wants and exhaust his resources so she can move on to the next one? Why, how can we tell a woman, stop doing that? Why would she? No less than we can tell men, stop having sex with women just because. But this is the problem that is existing, and this is a, a great example of what we are just talking about. As a man, I hold men accountable. I've been on here, and I've also said, stop having casual sex. Right or wrong. 100%. I'm on here and I'm saying stop giving value yourself. yourself. Yeah, stop giving yourself so frivolously and value yourself. And as for you as a woman, I don't need you to say, why would you stop going get in the bag? I need you to be like, stop biting the bait. He's a cornball. You're going to waste your youth, your precious times in a, on a cornball that's not going to really value you. Mm-hmm. He's going to just spend his money on you. You're buying the bait because it's a little bit of money. You're going to be... That's not my, my conversation to her more so is not what she shouldn't be doing, but for her to get clear on what she's going to offer. Because if that same woman who's going after the cornball dude, nine times out of ten, she don't have the qualities to give to the the real men that y'all are talking about. But how so is she going to obtain that? How, how she, I, I agree with you. No, but, you, but, but wait, a, no, mm-hmm. she, no, 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 no. I'm going to tell you why not, because you got to look at it this way. A dude with money mm-hmm. who's a lame mm-hmm. is just a lame dude with money. Mm-hmm. Aaron calls them <laughs> Rames. <laughs> Oh, Rich Lames? Oh, Rich Lames. <laughs> Aaron, go ahead and, and bring that in there. <laughs> we need that sound bite. <laughs> okay. Um, you want a oh, picture? Oh, it's, it's just oh, a Rich oh, Lame, oh, right? Rich Lame so is a Rich He leads with his money. So Rooms. you could have, you could have this a dude. Roamer. <laughs> You you can have this guy walk in and you know this is a regular dude. You know what he does? And he he works in the restaurant. He does the cleaning, not the cleaning, but he does something in the restaurant. He's a real man. Mm-hmm. He's not intimidated by somebody with money. He's not intimidated by a woman who's beautiful. He's not intimidated. Mm-hmm. See, a man who's a man is just not is a man who's not intimidated mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he. It's not that he's self insured that he has confidence. He just doesn't get intimidated. He understands he has his weaknesses. He understands he has his flaws. And he understands his lane but a man who is not intimidated is very hard to impress Mm -hmm. you you understand it's very difficult to impress that man because you may walk in with the guy and he may look at you and he like okay you're doing what you got to do and those guys that i'm talking about Mm -hmm. this is a real fact Mm -hmm. when they use that power for bad they become pimps because they understand their power Mm -hmm. because now they make the woman do a whole bunch of stuff because he understand his power. Those guys, when they don't abuse, you study pimp culture. Yeah, a little it. bit. I actually just reposted one today. So who who actually works for who? Well, realistically, the pimp is the one doing all the work. Yeah, he's okay. he's like he's he like does all the work. He's okay. the one that he's has the to admin. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, we're not gonna go into that because they call like, it self trafficking, but I'm yeah, talking yeah. about shit from the 70s and the 60s. But isn't the, he the admin? But yeah, the, like he can't even get nobody pregnant without whatever. He chick- doesn't even have sex with most of his girls. Exactly. She has to earn that dick. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. She has to pay that it. way. And that's and well, hey, look. She, Wait, let's let Alan finish. Yeah, yeah. His, no, she, no, a a pimp, like yeah. a, for a you pimp are, to have a right. sex with yes. one of his, yeah. for the lack of a better word. 
for a pimp to have sex with one of his hoes, mm -hmm. it has to be like, yo, you make $2,000 tonight, I'll let you taste the dick. Mm -hmm. You make it again two nights in a row, I'll fuck you. She has to earn that. That part I haven't heard, but... Yeah, that's pimp culture. You know Sharp? Shout out to Sharp on No Jumper. Sounds like a sad life. It's a big time. It is. It's a terrible it's life. psychological manipulation. Absolutely. But, but the point of what I'm saying is, like, when a man is secure with himself, he's not easily impressed. There's a lot of people that... That, I know there's a lot of people that put bad things in our system that we follow. This is one thing I got to agree with you. Mm -hmm. Early 90s, selling crack was so popular that everybody thought crack was the thing to do. It's a bad thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing to do. There are so many youth in the thousands, hundreds of thousands that went to jail and ruined their lives behind Absolutely. something that they thought was cool. Yep. I'm not saying the real drug dealers, shout out, not shout out to <laughs> your real, real drug dealers. <laughs> Salute. Yo, I know the Kudos. difference between a real drug yep. dealer and yep. someone who's just selling drugs. Right. Yep. These are not the same people. The real drug dealers, they are what I am saying. They are drug dealers. Yeah. Yep. They will die, kill for that life. Right. Those guys, that's not who I'm talking about. One drug, real drug dealer. There's about like 700. There's about a thousand yeah. <laughs> ones who became victims yeah. of it. Mm. And I think that's that whole city girl mentality, mm -hmm. get a bag now mentality. The city girls, mm -hmm. if you are really about that life, I salute you. My th what I'm trying to say is the city girls aren't even city girls. No, but but they but you know who they're they stay at home, but, but, right? No, no, yeah, no, no but you know you know who those city girls are. Mm -hmm. They are imitating someone they know who's about exactly. that. Exactly. And that's what I was saying from when I was talking about with Luke. We're imitating certain things that we know nothing about. There's consequences for that. Consequences that we could even fathom. There's consequences to technology. The fact that information can swarm the way that it can right now. The fact that any kid eight and up can have any any piece of information in the palm of their hand. This is the At least world. back in the day, if you wanted to see something yeah, salacious, you had to oh, you had to go get a magazine. True. You had to wait for mom and dad to go to sleep. You had to pull all kinds of things just to get what you want. I, you, there's a lot. Of, well, okay. All right, we got to do a part two. I think no, we do because look at all these questions I have for you. But no, it's not. We don't gotta go. She has to go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra, did I say it right that time? It's Cassandra, yes, but a little you can bring the bass down. Cass yeah, Cassandra, <laughs> thank you. Cassandra. She's good though. She's good. Thank you guys Wait. for having me. It's been such a pleasure. You, you got to roll oh. that song. Let, let's close it oh, out. Oh yeah, let's close yeah. it out. She's like, well, let me pack up my bag. Yeah, you want to close uh, it out, y'all, 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 y'all. Today, maybe you throw your questions in. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, you're right. I know. I did a lot of listening today, um, and and a lot of like refereeing because y'all just wouldn't be quiet. Um, but I I really appreciate everything you had to say because and and I always and I said this the other day. In, in the in the chat, you know, when things can be said to men and women the exact same and they can apply, that's how you know what's being said is a good thing because it can be applied to anybody. And I feel like, oh, sorry, the, the, the skills and tools that you're trying to help men have today, literally you can teach that to women mm -hmm. and we'll all have successful relationships. You know what I mean? So I learned a lot. I appreciate it. Um, Y'all. I cannot wait till this this episode airs. Yeah, you yeah you do have to come back. Let's go ahead and get you on the schedule we'll so get, we can. We'll get your questions. Yeah, so we can answer my questions next time. You gonna try to eat me alive, yo? He I got did good questions though. No, he didn't. But you know what? She kind of navigated very like. We took wait, it took a while like? to get you. You know, I haven't been in this space in a while, and I think that you brought me back to a thing that. It hasn't been done. It took a while to pull it out. Next time I'm gonna pull it out in the Ooh, first child, 10 minutes. But okay. She gotta go. Yeah. She gotta go. But y'all, right. make sure y'all tune in. Yes. Like, love, Instagram, YouTube, everything. She's she trying to show y'all that thing, people. She wants you to know what wow. she. Look, you gotta do no, I'm, I'm just joking. saying. I'm joking. She, she was trying to show. She's trying to show you the little, the little. She, she got to go. You got to say bye, Cassandra. Little... Bye, y'all. It's such a pleasure. I'll be back. Absolutely. All right, bye. thank you. We logging out. Bye. Get the date box.